three, four. Yeah, no, we're in poo -poo. five. <laughs> <pee -pee. laughs> Are we live? Yeah, we were. we're I we're, didn't hear the countdown, so I don't know. That's a lie. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, heckin' uh, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Thursday night over here at Longshot RPG. No, we're not. We're not Longshot anymore. We're on Pfeffers. We're just on Sir Pfeffers. That's the channel mm. name now. Yeah, it's a little weird. It is a live shot. It, wow. It a is a shot. long shot summer so long series. shot that we're going to say this. We're going to go back to the starting soon screen, y'all. We'll be right yeah, back. All right, we'll all right. Cool, again. cool, 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 cool. <laughs> Hang on. Stand by, stand by. And we are. And we're back. Oh, wow. Look at that. We're back. Everybody, hi. Happy Thursday. We're going to play D&D &D today. <laughs> Welcome to uh, Vale, where I DM. We haven't done this in a while. Mm -hmm. Fancy seeing you here. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm going to do a recap and everything at the end of everybody's introduction, so I'm going to hand it off to Fef for channel stuff. Hello. First and foremost, super important. More, get all that channel stuff out of the way. It's it's Vloxen's birthday. Happy birthday, Vloxen. You're the best mod. You're the, you just fantastic all right uh you can find uh fully edited episodes up on the youtube jake and pfeffers and uh feel free to hit over uh head over to the discord it's great um i'm playing a character named marrow he is a druid a stars druid and he's old and he is a heron gone which means he's a rabbit uh i introduced him just eating a dead rat out of his hand uh He's a crunchy boy. He's a he's a nasty, dirty druid. <laughs> he's old and he's freaky. And uh, that's that's Meryl. <laughs> Let me throw over to uh, uh, Luna Wolf Spirit. Hi, <laughs> I'm Luna Wolf Spirit. You can find me on TikTok and Instagram. And I am playing Tink, the artificer barbarian, who's very angry. And as we learned last time, is really good at tinkering. <laughs> so as long as it goes her way in the end. Beth, when Luna does bad. better than you, there's a problem. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> when Luna doesn't get the giggles and you get the giggles, there are issues. Uh, <laughs> pass it. Pass it at the Jake. Hello, I'm Crippled Jake, and I'm on TikTok and Instagram. I uh, play Ed with 10 Ds, uh, and he's a Twilight Cleric of uh, Biggest Duckus. I don't remember what happened last week, so I will not expound <laughs> further. Uh, Jared. <laughs> uh, don't expect much more uh, from me. Yo, I'm Jared, and I'm playing Dane with a last name, and I am a... Uh... Heckin blade singer rogue. Somehow edgy anime Indiana Jones that's been to too much school. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which Is leaves it, us with uh, our phenomenal uh, yeah. off you know. Sup gamers. Um I have COVID. I am sick. <laughs> So I He's so hot. And we were like, no, you're going to be streaming anyway. <laughs> no, I said I was going to stream. We were like, well, so anyway, just call it. You know, okay. get your get your fucking vaccines or you'll be worse than me, a.k.a. dead. You'll sound more sexy <laughs> until you die. <laughs> until you, right to death. Yes, you will. You will sound sexier, but you will perish as well. <laughs> But yeah, this is, um, I play Porky Vegas, who is a, a, a bit of a crybaby, who's a, a porcupine man, but he's just a regular man. But he was raised by porcupines, birthed the son of the greatest hunter of all time, Geronimo Vegas. He's a variant human, fighter eight, ranger three, battlemaster and gloomstalker, respectively. And uh, he sometimes swaps into a very edgy voice, and I have a funny feeling that's how we're going to be sounding the entire night. <laughs> so that's it. Uh, anyway, I have COVID. That is all. All right, cool. Anyways, guys. Uh, Welcome to the cum zone. No! <laughs> Let us begin. <laughs> yes, we did record that today. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've been sitting on that. You know, I'm amazed that I made it this far. Two Anyways. years ago, Fef would have just like shit a brick. 
<laughs> yeah, two years ago, Fef probably would have fired me. <laughs> How we've all grown. You've all corrupted me with your sexy <laughs> voices. I mean, listen to him, man. How... <laughs> You wouldn't let us name the episode the cum zone. This is true. So. <laughs> we're, we're, we're experiencing small changes in growth. We swear now. We say things like fuck. I hate it here. And pee pee poo poo. Remember the edgiest thing on the stream was the Kermit the Hydra? <laughs> <laughs> the good one, old of the head, one of the heads was an anti masker. <laughs> oh. God. Man, we we've always it. been super topical. And look how we that came it. back around. Now you've come. Yeah, really. Yeah. Back. <laughs> that stayed Still topical. Here. That's kind of scary. <laughs> yeah, it's been it is. Yeah. topical for the past forever. It's almost like it's a pandemic, and then we we didn't do anything about it. The one Kermit we gave them is a like, stretch a pandemic. <laughs> oh my god. Why did we give them a stretch command? It's been there for forever. a long time. It's just one of the basic. Stretch. <laughs> and Fef, you say that we corrupted you, lest we forget what you did on Terraform. Let no, lest we, we don't forget even talk that about tree. that. <laughs> lest we forget the the white viscous yeah, mushy boys just oozing that, out that, of an that, orifice. That, that, I will never that, live that down. After <laughs> you inserted a key no, into that, you sounded orifice. you sounded a living tree. <laughs> and it oozed white liquid from it, and they were filled uh, right. with screaming all kids. All right, wrap it together. Let's. let's... We'll, we'll wrap it up. That's what you do before you God sound. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I hope you get talked to about this at work. <laughs> <laughs> I work sound for a church. So anyways, <laughs> Steph, we were monitoring your social media presence and we were we were just wanted to talk to you about the My cum nightmare zone? situation. <laughs> what is this cum zone and why are we welcome? Oh, oh no. <laughs> oh, I'm How do sweating. you think this reflects the uh, organization that you are affiliated with as an employee here? <laughs> what is three minutes of playtime? <laughs> is this furthering the kingdom of God? Uh <laughs> <laughs> Four minutes of playtime. Is that please, possible? Please move on. <laughs> I'm asking nicely. Okay. Anyways, recap. <laughs> I forgot what happened last week because of this bit. Oh, I remember. No, I got it. So a okay. couple things that I want to like reestablish with what happened over the past couple episodes because uh, real life time has moved a lot more than in-game time has. So whole thing that's gone down so far is you guys uh, arrived in town, met each other, went to fight, uh, what was his name? Sniff Sniff? Sniff Sniff. Sniff, Sniff the not sca totally not Skaven Skaven. <laughs> he turned into a big hell pit abomination rat. He murdered you guys. Death said that shit's not cash money. <laughs> Death was like, hey, either work for me or die. Then you guys came back, murdered the shit out of Sniff Sniff, and then Tink got kidnapped. You met some other people who were working for death. They got absolutely ass blasted, they got in, including uh, Larry, Gary, and Terry. Uh, one of which was the nunchuck guy who died on the toilet like Elvis. Oh, he was our favorite. He was a good one. <laughs> and then you guys decided to wander through the sewers and uh, mm -hmm. follow some flowers to go meet uh, Mint, who runs a rehabilitation center for people who have been uh, negatively afflicted by... Uh, their involvement with Slurpium. And the main thing that I want to refocus on everything is that while this for us has happened over the span of now, what, four weeks in game, this is, you guys have taken what, one long rest, one or two. So all of these events have happened over the course of maybe like a day and a half. Yeah. Very like a 36 pace. hour window. So immediately where we left off last time was you guys were in the rehabilitation center with Mint. He was showing you guys around, explaining what he did there. Um, and how he utilizes Hemlock to uh, nurse individuals back to their appropriate age. Um, you guys found a in disrepair like mining drone that has been being sent to this facility to kind of like harass them and try to destroy their supplies of Hemlock. Uh, Tink literally climbed inside it and went all Tony Stark on it and tried to get it to work again. And I said it was like a 60-40 split on whether or not it would turn on you. Unfortunately, to my dismay, it turned on you guys. You guys fought that, and now 
that's exactly where we're going to leave off. Okay. And put more emphasis on uh, how quickly things are moving here. After you guys have time to, like, catch your breath and everything, because this fight happened immediately after a long rest because of how long it took. Yeah. Okay. Uh uh short rest and then it was a short rest rest. yeah and then we were gonna get a long rest afterwards yeah short rest okay yeah so you guys it took like it took like two hours for it to do it yeah okay then yeah if the plan was to move into a long rest let's go ahead and do that then all right crisp yeah actually i remember that now because i was like oh we'll do it right at the end right when we start Offbeat for no reason at all. Uh, what does the rule book say for uh, long rests being interrupted? Um, if you interrupt a long rest, uh, what exactly did you have in mind? You can Wait. do light activity. You can do things like Wait. walking around and whatnot, but like full on activity is different. Also two questions. Mm-hmm. Technically, wouldn't you guys be not able to take a long rest at this point because of how recently you slept previously? you have to do what's there's a time limit between long rest is 16 there? hours yeah i didn't know uh, i learned something new today depends if you'd like to give us more time or not hmm. personally that's a rule that on streams i just ignore yeah it's <laughs> because it's, it's not but same with the hit dice rule you're supposed to only recover half your hit dice every short um on, on long rests but that just in my opinion makes it more difficult to run a stream Fair. Mm-hmm. Go ahead and take the long rest. Moon. Moon. Yay. Like in home games, probably say fuck it. But like on a stream game, your, your goals are a little different, right? Yeah. I'm trying to entertain you. Laugh. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Come. <laughs> I watched you genuinely like, am I going to say it? Yeah, I'm going to say it. <laughs> it was like, it, it was a thought of like, why wouldn't I? <laughs> uh, I only have this voice until I recover, so. I better, you got to get your mileage. I, I might as well it. get I, I have to use it for evil or not at all. <laughs> so where are we taking our long rest? Like, what's this yeah, place look guys- like right now? So you guys have a couple options. Where you guys are at currently is basically like uh, you're in like basically like an alcove of a crypt where there's a bunch of like slots into the walls where there are uh, very decomposed remains that are growing hemlock, which is where you guys found that uh, broken down mining drone. You guys could go out into like more of the common area where there's like people working and like refining the hemlock into uh, the liquid that they like administer to these people. Got it, Luna. Um, you guys could also ask around and see if there's like a sleeping quarters or anything. Mint could probably direct you guys to like bed rolls or something like that. Sure. Tucked further away from the front gate. Uh, I don't trust. Mero doesn't really trust all this hemlock around here or any of these people. So uh, I, I suggest we keep a couple of watches. I'm willing to take the first. Regardless of that, we're in supposed safe hands. Do as you must, oh my rabbit God. man. Oh. <laughs> I am at high alert, so I will keep a watchful eye. Uh, okay. Porky looks noticeably more stoic than usual. <laughs> <laughs> There's a breeze tussling his hair, his quills. <laughs> Always looking vaguely off camera. <laughs> So how does this long rest go for us as we take a little nap now? Is uh, Marrow the only one who's going to take a watch? I'll take a watch as well. We can alternate. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. Mm-hmm. So you guys go. You guys mm-hmm. take a nap, nap. Mint will lead you guys to where basically like people, because basically all the people who are here are either coming down to like volunteer or they're in a position where they have to live down here. Um, so Mint takes you to like a sleeping corners, points out a couple empty bed rolls for y'all. Um, and long rest goes fine. Everybody be, be, you know, sleeping, whatnot, doing the honk shoe. Except um, me. 
Except you, I'm good you meditate after four hours. Yeah. Ooh, it's hot. All right. So then, towards the, like right at the end of your guys' uh, long rest, Dane, you would hear this, and whoever's on like the last shift for watch would hear, um, echoing through the catacombs coming from where you guys entered. You would be startled by the sounds of children screaming and crying, uh, one good old like Windhelm scream, and just the sounds of clattering metal breaking glass coming from the front of the area. And Mint is not with you guys. Mint is off doing minty stuff. Minty stuff. Everybody wake up. Time to go to work. <laughs> there is no rest for those with nobility in their blood. Sure. Are we? Oh, you're making my job so difficult. <laughs> Are we overthrowing the aristocracy of this place? <laughs> Pretty sure there wasn't an aristocracy here. Oh. <laughs> All Nobility right. is metaphorical, for we are kings. <laughs> I go first. <laughs> does, any, does anybody notice that he's had? Has he had a, it like hemlock or like a, <laughs> swiping? <laughs> hit in the head. His ball has finally dropped. <laughs> <laughs> he says with a high squeaky voice. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, well, Everybody I'm follows. Going to uh, cast uh, mage armor and <laughs> immediately follow up with a blade song. Uh, let me let me throw out a. Uh, Gosh. Cosmic Omen. Uh, finish a long rest. Let's see if it's wheel or woe. Sorry, I'm just remembering I need to do this now. No, you're good. Even wheel. Whenever a creature you can see within 30 feet of you is about to make an attack roll, uh, you can use a reaction to roll a d6 and add the number. But keeping that in mind. Oh. Heck yeah. Any particulars on marching order? That says a reaction, correct? Correct. Okay, okay, chill, chill. chill. Um, I'm going to be up front. I might be pushing oh. it, but I'd also like to cast a booming blade. Not a booming blade, a shadow blade. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, I'm gonna remind you guys up top because Tink put the thing back together if you were to see those things again, uh, of their oh, immunities right. and all of that stuff before, before you burn the slot. So, in the event that you're fighting the same thing as last time, uh, damage immunities are going to be fire, poison, psychic. Um, condition immunities are going to be charmed, exhaustion, frightened, paralyzed, petrified, or poisoned. Um, you guys know that dealing fire damage to it heals it. Um, bah, 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 bah. It was an AC of 21, a health pool of 210, um, and a... Uh, I can get into all the stats as they come up, but just rule of thumb. Strength is high, plus seven. Dex is low, minus one. Con is high, plus five. Int and Wisdom and Cha are all either... Uh, Int is minus four. Wisdom is plus zero. Cha is minus five. Okay. Okay, okay. What, um... Uh, Jared, do you have Spirit Shroud? I do not. Dang. I'll also... Is that a... Is that a... A wizard ol spell? That's a wizard mm -hmm. spell, yep. Uh, I would like okay. to pop Aura of Vitality. Okie doke. Wait, how long is that? Last? Uh, one minute. I will wait. I will hold my action until we are in combat to pop Aura of, Vi Aura of Vitality. Preferably, uh, like, what is the, the lighting second conditions? before we, uh, the second before we, uh, enter. Turn -based uh, the sleeping chambers were like dimly lit. The area that you guys walked through were um, trying to remember pockets of bright pockets of bright light with like stark shadows in like the recesses of the room. It's Would a you lot say of, that like, if I was in the in the shadows that I'd be in darkness? <laughs> yeah, but we'd have to get pretty specific. Like room corners, like if you're at like the junction of a wall or like something like that. Yes. Okay. Anything else? I would say, I say that I'm going to be trying to always be in the shadows as much as possible when we're making this little yeah. maneuver. Okay, chill. Um, <clears throat> how far away is are the screams and everything? 
approximately? Probably about 90 some... feet. Okay, so... Of, like, walking through everything. It's not okay. going to take you minutes or anything okay. to get there. Okay, take, like, then minutes. I'll, uh... I will pop my... Uh... Challenge Divinity. Anyone got a cheeky pass without trace? Oh, I do. Wait, that you already cast Aura Vitality. Is that I also haven't constant? yet. Okay. Pass without trace might be nice just so we can get the jump on him. Okay. Uh, then I will change plans. That's not the right character sheet. Uh, <laughs> and cast Pass Without Trace. Thank you. Thank you. I need buddy. to just talk Follow. into the microphone. Pass Without <laughs> Trace. Uh, concentration. So my concentration's burnt. Uh, Veil of sh Shadows and Silence. Uh... Yeah, plus 10 to stealth checks for the next hour. And what it looks like is just, um, I just take these ashes, like this small thing of ashes, and I just clap my hands together and, and it starts doing all the Simbas on everyone's foreheads real quick. <laughs> all right. Uh, then hit me with some stealth rolls if you guys are proceeding stealthily into the next area. Plus 10, okay. baby. Oh, thank God. <laughs> uh, guidance on myself. Wow. That is a 39. 19 plus 1 plus 19. 19? Got... I rolled a 2. Yeah. <laughs> I got With plus 10? Plus 10 plus 7, baby. Damn. 25 rough, for me. It's a rough Five. life. That's why we have the spell. 23. All right. Uh, so does it everybody... take longer than like technically like six seconds or a turn uh, to get there? Yeah. Okay, so everyone will get hit, uh, 10 hit points. Nice. Uh, and I'm not going to do it individually because that's going to take forever. So everyone just gets 16 temp HP. Nice. Let's go. We be zooming. Mm hmm. All right, anything else while you guys are approaching or am I good to take it from here? You can take it. All right, word. So as you guys enter into the uh, that front area, just past the gate where people were like working at lab tables and ministering medicine uh, to either young children, uh, well, visit what looks to be young children or looks to be infants. Um, the place is in complete disarray. You see uh, Mint about 30 feet away from you guys, like, ragged his uh emerald cloak is torn in a couple spots and he's facing off with one of these things and you can see his shoulders heaving as he's breathing heavily one of them so there's two of these drilling drones <clears throat> one of which is facing off with mint the other one as you turn the corner you see this thing is just like smashing tables and like it's just sending people flying you watch as it launches one of its drill hands towards one of the guards who gre who greeted you at the door oh. and it just impales this poor man like through the sternum and then it drags it towards him <laughs> and he's just like limp on this thing's appendage everybody roll initiative for me oh god <laughs> this is unfortunate 16 putting it in the chat 16 on mm. Mero. 19 30 20 19 on ed 20 on 17. 40. 17 on King. No feats or anything, so seven for me. Hard out here. <laughs> the dice be yeah. trying to kill me tonight. <laughs> I need to roll. Oh. You, you, you. I got options. And they're all concentration. <laughs> They're all <laughs> find a marrow real quick. Marrow's rocking with a 19, so that would put him. Marrow's rocking with a 16. Or not marrow, sorry, mint. Ah. Mint rolled a 19, which would put him after offbeat and after Jake. You think a dispel magic would work on these things? Is that table talk? Uh... That might be table talk. That's DM's, DM's preference on that one. Yeah. Should probably test that in a more controlled environment. Mm -hmm. 
like the opportunity we had last session that I didn't take. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, we live and learn. Yeah, we survive and, and all endure. of life. <laughs> all of life is but learning for the great test that comes tomorrow. I didn't take Por enough Por notes. <laughs> he says that. <laughs> says that. Uh, all right. Well, I'm not very scholarly. <laughs> not very academic. Oh, he'll hydrate. I eat bugs. <laughs> Porky, you are going to kick us off with the initiative order. You have, so, lay of the land, uh, do, 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 do. square room, 40 foot walls, so 40 foot per, uh, on each side. Mm -hmm. uh, you guys are coming in at the bottom right corner. Um, Minty is about 30 feet forward from you, and he's facing off with one of these large creatures. Uh, in like the top right corner the other one is like about in the center of the room so probably about like 25 but actually no about 20 feet away from you and it's just wrecking havoc amongst all of the tables and like there are normal people who are getting caught in the crossfire of all of this and it's just kind of wrecking shop all right is there any darkness yes it's, it's would... pretty dark where you came in <laughs> all right so i am currently in darkness i'm heavily obscured yes sir Excellent. I am then going to just from the darkness, Porky announces to his friends, from darkness comes death. <laughs> and I unleash my crossbow. <laughs> and because I'm heavily obscured, these attacks are made with advantage. I am declaring sharpshooter on all of them, which will be a minus five, plus 10 to damage. Minus five attack roll, plus 10 to damage. All right, which are you shooting? Are you splitting the shots? Are you focusing one? Which one looks more heavily damaged? They both look pretty equally un untouched. All right, then I'll pick the one that's currently wreaking the most havoc. All right, cool. One okay. in the middle of the room. Yeah. Uh, okay, that is going to be, the first one is a crit. That, uh, that, that will do it. Yeah. Second hit does a, okay, that I'm going to put a battle master technique on because that's probably going to be too low. I'm going to use precision attack to up it. That is going to be, okay, that's better. A 26 to hit. 26 will hit. Crisp. Attack number three. This is my Gloomstalker attack. I will use another Battle Master technique to that one. Okay. That is a 22 to hit. 22 will hit. Nice. That is. Damn, I am rolling very low. I'm going to have to put another Battle Master technique on this one. Hit. That is a 21 hit. 21 just 20, hits. 28, 21 AC, right. Never mind. I, first, I remember. I'm a little foggy. Uh, that is going to be another 21. This is hit number five. Okay, that is another t another 21. This one, two, three, Skating four, five, by. six. These are Gloomstalker, Gloomstalker, bonus action attack. <laughs> and a 24. Thank you, advantage, all of those hits. On the crit, I'm going to be putting a battle master technique on top of that. I need it to make a strength saving throw, please. Strength saving throw. Ooh, that's not looking good for it. How does a 13 sound? Oh, damn, you fail. It is knocked prone. Um... <laughs> So now time for the damage total. Uh, that is going to be, this is a crossbow. Oh, I forgot to, I forgot to Hunter's Mark. Oh, well, uh, it's going to be, I, I, I'm going to, that's going to be 1d6. That's 2d6 from the crit, 2d8 from the battle master technique. And that is going to be 1d6, 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 d8. Yeah, 1d6. Eight. And one day that. Oops, forgot to turn on my hardware acceleration after illegally streaming Netflix to my friends. <laughs> it's gonna take forever. For legal reasons, that's a joke. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. Oh no. <laughs> um that is going to be 
What's 15 times 7? 105. 105, excellent. 144 damage to that one as I go bow, 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 bow. Eat shit. And it is prone. So you guys watch as you approach the entrance to this room. Porky steps forward into complete darkness and just becomes invisible. Mutters an edgy one-liner because he is justice right now. And then fans the hammer with with unnerving accuracy as this flurry of crossbow bolts shoots across the room, missing all of the random people in here. There's, there's like a collection of dudes in here that are just innocent bystanders. You swear to God, you see a bolt bend around a dude and then keep going. <laughs> <laughs> and all of them find purchase and like lodge themselves in the chinks of the treads on this thing as, that it uses to move. And as it's lunging forward to try and like get at more people, the treads jam up and lock up, causing it to teeter forward and fall flat on its face and like comically slow. <laughs> Which then... Um, nice. Violence bends before justice. <laughs> the one that is facing off with Mint is going to uh, interrupt the turn order with a legendary action, and it's going to launch its drill at Minty real quick. Oh, no. Minty's the cat. Mint. Oh, oh, God. Oh, my. Okay, this dice is going in jail. So you watch as... This thing launches its, like, drill fist at Mint. Sorry, offbeat. That was it, right? You used your action and bonus action. Cool. Launches its drill fist at Mint, and he sidesteps it, <clears throat> and it lodges itself into the wall, and Mint, in one flurry, draws a blade that gets wreathed in, like, magic real quick, and he just slices down through the chain, and the thing is effectively lost a hand. Rolled in that one. Whew. And with that, we're going to go over to Ed. Ed, right. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm going to nice multi attack. Nice. I'm Pork Man. <laughs> I'm no, Pork. Porky says I'm Batman. <laughs> <laughs> the quills of justice. <laughs> Pointy and unbending. Unyielding before. Villainy and what hunts porcupines, I guess leopards. I don't know. What is the natural predator of a porcupine? And then in a D and D setting. <laughs> Other so than, there are two of them, right? Nishers. Correct. And then how's the one that um Porky hit? A lot like? of other things. Not good. Not good. Its tread is all <clears throat> mucked up. It's like spurt and smoke as it's laying on the ground trying to right itself. If it had blood, it would be bloodied. <clears throat> it's they oily. Have like they have like Spoils, 200 yeah. health or something, right? <laughs> yeah, 210. So I had, I dealt 144, so it should be about okay. crisp, like 70 damage should be able to take it out. Fish I know we talked about this before, uh, probably last, last time we played. Um, is Bless still useful to you after the first round, or is it like you really the Bless first one? Bless is useful really... to the whole party regardless, but... It is less useful for me now that it is the second round. But obviously, it's still useful to a large portion of our party who are making attack rules. And saving right. throws are always nice, so. Alright, so I'll... I'll cast Bless, and I'll put one on... Actually, I can... If you upcast it, you can bless all of us. Yeah, I was going to say, I can, I'll just do third level and cast and bless all of us. So that's a D4 to uh, attack rolls or saving throws. Thank you. Biggest and then biggest. as bonus action, I'll cast Spiritual Weapon. And I will smack. I will, you know, I will bonk the one that's down. All right, go ahead and four. add a D4 and roll with advantage. to hit. 28 will do it. You know what else they call a spiritual weapon? W 
Do what, it. Do it, what? coward. Do it. What? What do they? What do they call a spiritual weapon? The, tiny hands. the sword of Jesus Christ. No. Genesis one one. No. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Uh, so that's 16 uh, force damage. You're taking the scripture out of context. How much? 16. Oh, I'm pretty sure it's a sort of truth. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you conjure the the squeaky duck at the end of a stick and bonk this, uh, this guy. As he's laying down on the ground. You see some of the metal plating like dent in a little bit. Nice. As you guys just continue to bully him. Uh, cut to offbeat flipping through the pages of the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> and on the third day, God said, let there... No, I can't. Thank that, you. That'll be, that's all for my turn. Anyways, uh, next up is Mint. And <clears throat> Minty is feeling pretty froggy after he just cut this thing's hand off. Um, ba, 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 ba. He does have a green cloak. He might just be a frog. He might just be a frog. <laughs> <laughs> I need to get it. I need to get a smaller Bible. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> this book's been through it. Holy shit. I think it got soaked in my water in Christian school. Back when I was a better wee boy. <laughs> and this thing is immune to like half the stuff that Minty can do. All right, Minty's just gonna run up and try to stab it. So he does not have many options to deal with this. Oh God. Yeah, Minty's not having a good time. <clears throat> not Minty, Mint. Mint runs up, you guys watch as Mint runs up and he draws a rapier and tries to poke at the thing. He's not making any headway with that. <laughs> um, next up, we're going to be looking over at Tank. Actually, do, 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 do. Um, the one who's super injured is going to use a legendary action to oh. use its use 30 feet of movement. It's going to use half of that to stand up and then 15 feet to approach the party. I am approaching you. Does oh. that provoke any attacks of opportunities? No. Okay. Moves without provoke. All right. Tank, go for it. I'm gonna cast Grease right where it's standing. Okay. No. no. You gonna lube it up? I need a deck save. Okie doke. He's not good at those. Uh, five minus one, four. Damn. Yeah, he's prone again. <laughs> he lays back down. <laughs> he, you see him roll forward over this slick of Grease, and if he, <laughs> and it starts to like wheel back and forth. Like trying to figure out how to how the hell to stand on it, and then it just floors it a little too aggressively, and its feet flip out from under it, and it slams flat on its back. It's kind of rolling back and forth like a turtle. <laughs> All right. Uh, Tink is gonna use. Uh, she's gonna fly up, so she's kind of in the air, and she's gonna just point at me like "ha," and then that'll be her turn. <laughs> All righty. That poor guy. <laughs> um, <laughs> the one over with Mint is going to burn its second one legendary action for the round to dip out of melee with Mint and move uh, 30 feet towards the party. Um, who's on the front line right now? Because offbeat, Porky's right in the entrance. Um, did anybody like come like fully in, like closer uh, to things? I probably came in with them. Okay, so it's not able to attack or anything, but it's going to move 30 feet, not uh, provoking opportunity attacks to get closer to the group. And it's ignoring Mint at this point. Marrow. Okay, uh, so one is on its back doing a turtle in the grease. Uh, the other one is moving toward us and still has a sizable amount of hit points. It still um, has all of its hit points, all but it only has one points. hand. Okay, one hand, all of its hit points. I like it. Marrow is going to pull out this like long chunk of obsidian nervously looking around <laughs> i've always wanted to try this <laughs> he starts eating it and chewing on it and breaking it up and he <laughs> and he slams his hand down on the ground and nothing happens for a second 
and then the uh, earth around the uh, the second one that's rushing towards us erupts. Mm -hmm. I'm casting erupt earth at fifth level. Um, it needs a dex save of 15. Um, or it is going to take a full 5d12. Okay, it's going to take the full 5d12. Yes. Uh, creep, duh, 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 failed save, half as much as sixth one. Additionally, the ground in that area also becomes difficult terrain until cleared. Um, rolling my damage. That's until cleared as well, so that's going to be there. Yep. Like forever. I got mold earth, <laughs> or someone does. Yeah, I have mold earth. I do. Yeah, we can we can mold it afterwards. Do you guys have shaped stone? Oh. How about your mom? <laughs> How about does your mom have shaped stone? Yeah. Because she got shaped wood. Uh, 32. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 32 magic bludgeoning damage? Maybe just bludgeoning yep. damage. Well, the distinction between bludgeoning damage is that weapons deal... Whenever there's an immunity, they have immunity to bludgeoning damage from non-magical weapons. Okay. There's no yeah. such thing as non-magical versus magical. It's just that okay, okay. whether or not the weapon deals it. That's why a Tarask can die from falling damage. So big... 20-foot yeah. radius of erupting earth around it. I'm gonna say mint's fine. I don't think you would have gotten caught in that. Yeah, he said he moved up 30 feet towards us, yeah. so boom. <laughs> Alright, and that's my turn. Now we're on these guys. Okay, cool. So the one that's in the grease, gonna use half of his movement to stand up. Um do, 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 do. so that's 15 feet of movement. Is does grease make it difficult terrain or yeah, difficult terrain. Okay, and he's gonna move forward about seven and a half feet. <laughs> he's gonna be like, I'm gonna get you. <laughs> no. Um, is he like kind of like losing his balance? Yeah, <laughs> he's like rocking back and forth a little bit. Slippy. <laughs> now the second one is going to close the gap with the party. The one-handed one. It's going to get up into melee with the remainder of the party. Um, offbeat, Porky's invisible. He's I'm, the closest I'm, to the... I'm currently in darkness. I'm heavily obscured. Heavily obscured. Yes. If they have dark vision, I'm invisible. Okay. Who's the, Who would be the closest to this thing at the current moment? It could be me. Has anyone moved up other than me? I think just you. I think then it's just like a your, your dealer's choice. Yeah. All right. Who's done? Yeah, no, he's gonna he's gonna come after Porky. What's Dungeon the ruling dealer. on heavily obscured? Is it just harder to see? Um, I believe you have to first pass a this a a perception check. Let me check. Um. So you are you have to treat yourself as if you are under the blinded condition. If you're trying to target a heavily obscured thing. Okay. So you cool. fail any ability check that requires sight, specifically in this case to see me, and mm -hmm. attack rolls against me have disadvantage. Yep. So you can still target me. Yeah. I'm just thinking about how this thing would behave. Mm -hmm. It's a it's a yeah, it's a single minded thing, so it's not gonna go for you. It's gonna take the path of least resistance to whoever's closest that it can see, like with the least effort. I mean, it knows oh. I'm there, though, so, like, there's an argument, because I can still target me. It's aware of my presence. It's just it's going to be swinging in the dark. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You could argue um, it, is what I'm trying to say, I guess. Yeah. Uh, no, it's going to move up to uh, Marrow. Ah. I'm going to take a swing at the old man. <laughs> but it's only going to be making two instead of three. Metal constructs. Oi, oi, oi. Frickin' uh, nightmare from my childhood. 18 to hit? Uh, 18 hits. Okay. Harder! Oh, dear lord. Uh, and then a 29. Harder! <clears throat> so this thing walks up. <laughs> 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 Kinky. <laughs> Meow. I got plenty of I know HP. bunnies have fine. a stereotype, but come on. Harder! <laughs> 
Shit, I didn't know that was on the table. Ooh, ooh. Not for you, boy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> All right, so this thing walks or er, tracks its way up to marrow, and with one with its one hand, jabs its drill forward and then pulls it back <laughs> up and then slams it down, dealing a total across both hits thirty four points of bludgeoning damage. <laughs> the young marrow. <laughs> Ow. That's going to be it for him. Do, 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 do. And then we go to Dane. Hey, I'm gonna do something real complicated, like run up and hit it. Hell yeah! <laughs> oh wow! No, it will be Zoo with a me mama. booming blade. Nice. All right, we're gonna swing twice on it. Don't forget that crisp sneak attack. With the beam. Yeah. What is my bonus? Okay, it is that. That one is not gonna hit. That's a smooth uh, 17 to hit. No glance off of it. Yep, same for the second hit. So Oy. you take two very you were very proud of these swings. You take two swings at it, but the blade just glances off, leaving dull scratches on the armor of the of the con of the construct. Which then puts us back up to the top with Porky and legendary actions get refreshed at the top of the order. Indeed. I'm going to uh I'm under effects of bless, correct? This you are. Day. Oh, okay. bless. <laughs> uh, oh. You'd have to roll a four. Yeah. I guess I'll try. See, my first roll was... They were both 17. Nine, so it was a 17 was the first roll. And it'd be a smooth 20. So that's not going to do it. And... The second one was... Yeah, it's a 16, so no. Okay. Still no. All right. With advantage, because I'm still in the dark. It's a good day to be me. That's another crit. We're um, in dim light. I'm not using Shadow Blade, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Big Sag. Yeah. Uh, that is going to be a 27 to hit. Yep. And a bonus action attack. Or that's a I got a nat one and then a nat twenty on the fucking <laughs> that's it. you you I shoot mean... two shots <laughs> you shoot two shots and the nat twenty is like it's going so good it's going so good but then the second shot somehow is traveling faster <laughs> like knocks it off of its trajectory a little bit and just turns it into a normal hit like it was gonna do some sick nasty stuff but it had so much but then you shot it. I have advantage. So oh, you, oh, 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 I thought you, oh, okay, never mind, never mind, never mind, never mind. I, I thought you were hit. telling me that the end result was one one attack of a nat one and then one attack of a, <clears throat> of a crit. Oh, no, that's the two crits and one hit. <laughs> <laughs> Completely Crisp. misunderstood what we were talking about. It's okay, it's okay, I understand. Uh, on the crit, I'm going to, is, is, is this one prone again or is it still standing? This one's standing. All right, I'm gonna. Are you attacking the one that has one hand, or the one with both hands that has fallen on his face twice? Um, that one hasn't really taken too much damage. The one with it one doesn't... hand has not taken much damage. Oh no, no, no the one that hit. since since I last attacked it, it hasn't taken much damage, has it? Correct. I mean, I hit it. Okay. Well, I guess I'll finish it off then. <laughs> um, that helped. <laughs> um, I, I won't put on a precision attack though, because I can or do plus, me. plus forty-five. Uh, it's going to be taking 55 damage. All righty. As quick little blasty. How would you like to do this, my friend? Ooh. <clears throat> From the darkness, three more, three more quills fire off. Each one written the lines of a haiku. We live in death. I see that which I do not see. Your death comes from I. <laughs> <laughs> and then they pierce. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> it explodes. <laughs> the power of poetry, the spoken word. You see the metal plating on this thing shudder as the power of prose envelops its body as the plating of its carapace just launches off, pinging off of the stone walls <laughs> as just a, a skeletal frame falls into a pile of loose nuts and bolts. Quick shout out to my expect mod. expect poetry. Quick shout, <laughs> shout out to my mod, Ballad Boy, for helping me get improv haikus going. Yeah, <laughs> Ballad really Boy, good. let's go. Anyway, that's my turn. Actually, wait, before I end my turn. Um, I'm going to uh, swap. I'm gonna. I'm gonna leave my position in the darkness. Who current? I'm gonna go up to to Mero, and I'm gonna. I'm gonna say, "Dance with me, Mero." Oh, I'm gonna nice. grab your arm, and I'm gonna bait and switch. Surprisingly, um, adept dancer, light on his feet. <laughs> I add seven to my armor class with bait and switch, and that is that is all. So now I have. Um, I've gone with a 25 AC. And then I will end my turn. So I'm now in the light. And I am targetable easily. You take damage? Have you taken damage yet? No, I have not. Okay. You're going to re-up your temp hit points. <laughs> no need. Nah, that's Gucci. The one-handed one is going to take a legendary action before we get to Ed. Mm -hmm. Tink, are you still up in the air? Yeah. All right. It's going to launch its one good hand up at you. Try and get you. Tink, how does a how does a twenty six feel? Oh, that hits. Oh. Okay. Uh, so. silvery barbs. Nice. Let's go. Nice. So it imposes disadvantage. That's a crit. Yeah. Well, good try. So we'll stick with the twenty six. <laughs> you you have to use a lower roll. Yeah. Okay. So a sixteen. Um, Tink. Before we do damage, can you roll me a dexterity saving throw? Yeah, I can also use my reaction to shield. Do you want to use your reaction? If you if you can make this thing not hit, we're looking at a 26 right now. Or I could just roll a nat 20 and plus one. 21. All right. And All you right. can also, cool. you have, you're blessed, so you can add a d4 to your saving throw. Mm-hmm. She's good. She only needed a 16. Nice. So, you don't get dragged towards the thing and take additional damage, but you do take the first, the initial hit, which is just going to be a crispy 14. We're looking at a total of 21 bludgeoning damage as this thing shoots up into the air. It doesn't, like, fully impale you. It kind of glance off the side of it, making it a little bit more difficult for you to stay up into the air and then it starts to retract back into the thing's hand, and then we're going to jump over to Ed. All right, uh, so for Silvery Barbs, I'll I'll go ahead and give um, the advantage to... Uh, you do you do melee, like, physical attacks, right, uh, Luna? Yeah. Okay, yeah, so you get advantage on your next attack roll. Ability <laughs> check or saving throw in the next minute. Um, And then I will I have far too many concentration spells. Is there a dragon? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like that first dragon <laughs> shadow to pass over you when you really weren't ready to instill fear in you as a kid playing Skyrim. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll never forget no. accidentally punching that one chicken. You were a kid playing Skyrim. <laughs> we know you're old. <laughs> that was in college. <laughs> I was in I was in like ninth grade. Mm -hmm. I was. So I'll, I'll swing with my spirit blade or spiritual spirit weapon, whatever. Spiritual weapon of the word. <clears throat> or as they say in Psalm 119. Oh my god. You are blessed when you stay on course. Uh, is it 21 like, hit? Stay on course, hit. boys. 
walking steadily on the road revealed by God. In this case, a large duck in the sky. <laughs> 14 force damage. No and then I'm gonna hit. I'm gonna hit it with a guiding bolt. Alrighty. Uh, 26 to hit. 26 will indeed hit. Twenty-seven is that radiant damage. Yeah. Yeah. Twenty-seven radiant damage, and the next attack roll made against it uh, for the end of my next turn has advantage. Nice. And All right. My turn. Heck yeah. So simultaneously, you see this thing. It starts to its torso pivots on an axis, and it goes to launch that drill up towards Tink. As it does that, your spiritual weapon blinks from its previous position over to next to it, and the duck head of the hammer slams into the side of it, knocking it slightly off kilter, explaining why Luna didn't get pulled into the thing. Um, and then immediately after that, you extend your hands, shooting out a beam of radiant light, and this dart arcs across the dimly lit room, shedding light as it goes and lodges itself into like the what would be the rib cage as a glowing target for the next person to attack. Um, after that, we're gonna go to Mint. Um, Mint is going to, as a bonus action, um, he's going to give Bardic Inspiration to, 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 to Tank. So you can add a D8 to a D20 roll. And to, 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 he's going to cast Shatter on the homeboy. Oh. So the homeboy is going to need to make a constitution saving throw. This is 17, so he's going to be taking half. I'll go ahead and roll damage real quick. D8s, right? Yeah, it's D8. It's going to be three. I'm short of D8. There it is. <clears throat> hey. 12 plus 5 is 17. 17 divided by 2 is a crisp. Oh, Marcus Territory, thank you for the raid. Woo! How it do, how it be, how it is. Welcome in. We are currently in combat. All right, so... <clears throat> Mint says some encouraging words to Tank, and you feel inspired, and then you see him with a flourish of his blade. A He slashes down in a downward arc, and then immediately after that, you hear this concussive boom uh, fill the room, uh, reading from the epicenter right on top of this, uh, construct. Kind of makes your guys' ears ring a little bit, but you see it recoil back from the thunder damage. And with that, we're going to jump over to Tink. Tink is going to fly at it. At yes! Its head, cause she's in the air, and she's going to immediately into rage. Um, and scream, but it's gonna be the bell noise. <laughs> she's inspired. <laughs> um, and I'm gonna roll for what happens when she goes into her wild magic thing. Okay. That's gonna be. All right, magic infuses one weapon of your choice. You're holding into the rage ends. Your weapon's damage type changes to force, and it gains the light and thrown properties with normal rage of 20 feet and long range of 60 feet. Oh, damn. Come back Let's... to me if it leaves my hand. Let's go. I'm my turn. Um, and then I'm just going to start wailing on it. Smack him. Be the little mosquito you were born to be. <laughs> 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 Don't forget you have advantage from Guiding Bolt as well, and that okay. D8 to add to whatever. You also have advantage from Silvery Barbs. Okay. 
that you, you can just use at any time. To the cheeks. <laughs> First one's I gonna be a twenty-seven to hit. Twenty-seven will definitely hit. Um, do you mean just roll both hits and then damage? Yeah, do both attacks, and then we'll do damage after. It's just the one boyo. Correct. The other one exploded due to the power of poetry. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be another 27 on that one. That will also do the damn thing. me 12 slashing damage in total click that yeah all righty the thing is taking a moderate beating but it's still looking like it's uh more functional than not okay Well put Vloxen, the party was saved from death by death. How who was the last person that got swung at? It was Tink, right? So. Alright, cool. Um is that the end of your turn, Tink? Yeah. Alright, before I jump over to Mario, I'm gonna interrupt with just a quick little he's just gonna make a melee attack. Um Who would be yeah, it's going to retaliate at Tink. Tink, I'm sorry. You're getting focused down pretty hard this fight. But you're flying around like a mosquito, stabbing this poor bastard. I'm so he's going to make one attack. Oh, my God. Jared, you get six ten, You get six HP from chat. No, I didn't. I didn't. <clears throat> Thanks, chat. Thanks, chat. So, uh, this thing tries to swat at Tink because Tink is just flying or buzzing around this thing's head. And it whiffs so hard. Like, if, if you see, if it had blood vessels, they would, he'd be red in the face. He's quite embarrassed. <laughs> but he rolled in that one, and I don't know how to punish him outside of just looking like a big, silly idiot. Everyone points and laughs. <laughs> Tink is, yeah, Tink is laughing. Most humorous. <laughs> you embarrass yourself in the heat of battle. The heat? This is equivalent to dropping trow in the middle of a crowded mall. <laughs> You're stupid. <laughs> <laughs> now right. shit yourself. Consider your pants peed. <laughs> um, Mero, you're up. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> do would it cost me an action to make a perception check to see if there is anything else coming, or if this is just the last? <laughs> Shut up, Offy. <I'll> <laughs> or if this is like the last thing that we're going to be immediately outside. fighting? Is that an action? To make that I I'd, I'd say I'd say not go for it. All right. Cuz that's going to determine what I do. It's a 1. Uh 4. That's a 1? Yep, it's a 4. Okay, you like oh, uh, this is my favorite part about how I run crit fails on uh things like this. Okay. Um you are 100% convinced like it is it is the truth in your bones that there are at least two more of those things that you can hear their tracks turning and coming down from the hallway. Oh no, really? Damn it. You believe in your heart of hearts that shit is about to pop off even more. Okay. Uh, with that firm belief, <laughs> there's gonna be more. There's more coming. We need, um, um, and, and looking around, are there still people like running around in danger or have they kind of, ex have they kind of run away? That most people have like kind of ran away. You see that some people were like about to go out the main ent entrance. And when you start yelling that there's more coming, like just sheer panic. People run around like some people just freeze. Some people like just turn around and book it the other way. Um, <laughs> this... There's probably about like six innocents left in here. This is where we hold them. <laughs> and I'm going to cast Druid Grove. Uh with pulling out a, a little piece of mistletoe, which uh, <laughs> was harvested with a golden sickle under the light of a full moon. Uh, <laughs> Doesn't that take 10 minutes to cast? No. Yes, I'm a fool. 
Oh, you know what? That works out. That means I can do the thing I actually wanted yeah, to that, do. That saved you from that. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay. It's like, it's like, that took a while last time. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, I, I was going to do that if there were more coming because then I can get guardians up that will help uh, block. Anyway, uh, a bunch of these constellations begin appearing around me and uh, just kind of floating. And I pick one from each constellation until there's like a long line of this kind of radiant light. And I grab a hold of it. And with no uh, spell slot burned, I cast Guiding Bolt at the last one uh, and just, just whip it and it goes flying. All right, go ahead and roll the hit for me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, my, you know, I, I was sitting here this whole time thinking I was just ready. Uh, that is a seventeen to hit. Seventeen does not hit. <laughs> so you conjure these, you conjure these constellations. That's a lot of con words. Um, con. you conjure these constellations and you pluck a star from one of them and launch it streaking across the room at this thing. Mm -hmm. Um, unfortunately it goes wide and slams into the stone, smooth stone wall on the other side. And now there's just a bright glowing light on the other side. I'm just going to stand there and go. That, that would have been really cool if it connected. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> I, I, I like, I like what you did with the stars there. Yeah, I appreciate that. <laughs> Some sometimes light illuminates our failures. <laughs> <Woo! Forky. laughs> this is the round marrow whiffed. <laughs> is it my turn again? No, no, you're just saying dumb shit. <laughs> <laughs> Valid based. Uh, cringe. Posting cringe on main brother. <laughs> Always. That's Always. Right. Have you seen Anyways. my YouTube channel? <laughs> <laughs> Millions of people just like, ah oh, man, I love cringe. And I'm like, fuck yeah. <laughs> Based. <laughs> red pill <pilled>. money. <laughs> would, would you say that the outlaws are red pilled? Would you say they're pretty based? I would say they're based. I would say they are ironically red pilled, as everybody should be, but they are definitely cringe. Like every <laughs> single one is cringe. You know? And that's the truth. All right. Ugh. So oh, I'll also step forward a little bit to see if I can tank at all. Okay. The drilly boy. Um, first things first, anyone with a passive perception over, uh, actually, no, passive perception like over 10, because this is pretty obvious, because the things, these things have like glowing eyes. Oh. You notice that the, um, previously red tint to the eyes transforms to uh, a deep green oh. and the head uh, pivots around in a 360 degree kind of taking <laughs> in the room and then focuses back in on the party and then shifts back to red. <laughs> um, and with that, he's going to mosey on forward and then try to take a swing a ding at Marrow. He's going to take two swings at the young Marrow. The old man who conjured me away. Stars. The 16? Might not consider swinging at the one who felled its friend. Oh, I'm good, homie. I'm good. I can take it. I haven't been hit. No, you haven't. You're also a pain in the ass to hit with attack rolls. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> These things have been incredi incredibly inefficient all fight. May I remind you how one fell over and then fell over again and the other <laughs> one crit failed twice. <laughs> <laughs> I need to take some resources other than spell slots. <laughs> okay. Fine. Mm -hmm. I, I want to deposit an argument. <laughs> it was what mistake. you're saying? It makes sense. But fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> I need that clip. It's because I need I'm, that audio. Because <laughs> I'm too filled with justice. It fears <laughs> my... <laughs> Rocks fall, Porky dies. <laughs> Anyways, does a 16 hit for Mero? Yes. Oh Just boy. barely. Okay, so, both, so both of these are going to hit. That's fine. I'm okay. good. I'm good. First one. We're looking at a young. Immediately goes down. <laughs> That'd be pretty funny. <laughs> I can take it. Dies. 
right. Well, the thing is, I can Overkill. wild shape later and get even more temp HP and all that good stuff. Not temp HP, but a, another a secondary uh, health pool. You were attacked before, right? I was. Yes. Uh, okay, so you would have gotten more temp HP just from rounds passing. Sweet. Uh, so you get 15 temp HP that you would have had. Hot damn. Two turns ago. Good thing. The damage rolls were spicy. So this thing slams its drill bit into you twice, mm. dealing a total of, uh, over both swings, 46 points of bludgeoning damage. 46? Yes, sir. I like it. Picasso. Okay, I like it, Picasso. Mm. Next up after that is Dane. Look at that. We all actually wins some hits. Get him. The exact same. Swing twice. You are still blessed. Yep. Cool. Well, I mean, that's pretty much going to be a nope. Yep. Uh, it might be a yup. What'd you get? I've got some stuff. I rolled a five. Uh, so that is in total a 13 after bless. Um, mm. I need eight more. Oh, uh, yeah, I can't help you. I'm just not able to. Try another swing. Okay, that's looking much better. So at least I'll hit once. All right, so that's going to be a 23, 24. 24 will do it. 24. Dice Goblin, thank you so much. What level rogue am I? Okay. That. What's that? All right. Everyone go check out her dice shop. This episode was brought to you by COVID. Um. <laughs> All right, and I am going to use Booming Blade on this. Uh, so it'll be a cool uh, 19 damage. Cool, crispy 19. Magical poke poke. Magical poke poke. All righty. Pew, pew. All right, so what type of sword do you use, Dane? It is a rapier. A rapier? All right, so Dane just thrusts forward with his rapier and finds a chink in the plating of this thing, and as the blade penetrates between the carapace of the of the creature, uh, the energy from Booming Blade, you used Booming Blade, correct? Okay. Explodes and kind of blows out the metal piece of that area, uh, dealing 19 damage. The thing is officially bloodied. Um, and with that, we jump back to the top of the order with Porky. Bloody has less than two, less than a hundred health left, hundred and five ish. Hmm. I, can I can deal about fifty. I'm trying to consider whether it's worth it casting Hunter's Mark in this scenario. No, it'll die this round probably if we all, if we all, if we all go all in. Okay. Uh, I'm good. I'm going to once again slink into the darkness. <gasps> He's so mysterious. I am now in the darkness again. He's so beautiful. I will now, <laughs> I will now once again yeah, cast, cast my arrows which whistle on the wind. What do they whistle? Do it to me. Poetry. Uh, you need a young D6? Are you good? Oh, I'm probably good. I've got advantage and bless up. Okay, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> That's a 25 to hit. 45 will do it. 25. 25, not 45. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. That is a, oh wow, two eights. That is a 16, that will miss. That will. Alexandria. Hello, Zucchini. <coughs> and that is a, a 25. That will hit. Okay. That will. So that is going to be 2d6 uh, plus a, oh, I've been forgetting my d4 on one of these hits from being a, from being a ranger, the favorite foe <laughs> bullshit. What's your favorite foe? Favorite foe? Oh, it's it's a uh, it's from Tasha's. Whenever you hit a creature with an attack roll, you can mark the target as your favorite enemy for one minute, or oh. until you lose concentration. The, f <clears throat> the first time on each of your turns that you hit the favorite enemy and deal damage to it, including when you mark it, you can increase the damage by a d4. So we got we that's we got way better. Uh, yeah, it's pretty it's pretty great. It's pretty great. That's uh, nine plus two. That is eleven plus thirty. That is forty-one. 
plus 41. I don't know what you're putting in these quills, Porky, <laughs> but they you got you're covering them in like anti-robot juice. <laughs> <laughs> They fire with such force that it's a little hand cannon. It's just water. Just live. It's just a lot of <laughs> poof. Frying the circuits. Or it's just spit. It's just <laughs> fucking acid, acidic inside of him. <laughs> All right. Uh, interrupting with that real quick. <clears throat> um, you guys would notice that the, the lenses of the eyes are going to change color again, and there's like a little puff of smoke that comes out of the back of its head. Um, as it pivots and turns towards mint, and it's going to use its legendary action to take to shoot the drill at Young Mint, who is going to ooh with an 18. That's still going to hit. And then we'll roll his deck save. He has a plus silvery two. barbs. Silvery <laughs> barbs. Nice. Okay. Boop, 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 boop. That one is higher. Dang it again. Please. Sorry. <laughs> I mean, yeah. all right. So he also fails the deck save, so he's not going to have a good time. So Mint is getting dragged like through the debris across the room as he is. Impaled by this drill. No. Who's gonna take three D ten plus seven? Plant, of the so drill. I love him. For twelve. Have been plus named seven. after a better plant. Oh. For real. <laughs> We're gonna have a talk yeah. later about the efficacy of mint. <laughs> he, should, he should have been named after Not something mint. strong like birch, or maybe persimmon. <laughs> persimmon. <laughs> the fruit and a plant. You must so be mint in one like round. Bamboo. So mint in one move, not looking so hot, uh, as he gets impaled by this drill and then dragged into melee range with this thing, um, and still resting on the drill. And with that, we're gonna jump over to edit. All right, I'm gonna give myself that advantage on the attack from Silvery Barbs. Let's go. Um. Oh my God. And how's it? How's it looking? Uh, bloodied. Yeah, I would say, if this was a game, a seventy-five percent HP done in damage. Cool. All right, all right. Let's see. <laughs> I dealt forty, so it's probably got a, like fifty-ish. YOLO. YOLO? Do it. Do, YOLO. It. do it. Not uh, us. I don't know what you're doing, but do it. We came back from the dead. We lived twice. I'm going to... What is this, Sekiro? <laughs> use my advantage from Silvery Barbs, Silvery Barbs. to yeah. hit him with another Guiding Bolt. And that is less on top. Twenty-four to hit. Twenty-four will do it. Thinking. Thirty-six radiant damage. Be a lord, son. Let's go. And then it is glowing, so I will get an advantage on my attack with my spiritual weapon. Exactly. Look at him go. He's ramping. He's morbing. He's morbing. <laughs> Watch out. He's about hear to say it's morbing time. <laughs> Silence. I mean, Mint is still impaled on the drill. Yeah, 20, just... 25 to hit. 25 will hit. You gotta roll some spicy shit. It's possible, but you gotta roll spicy. I don't know. Uh, max damage. I don't know if it's enough, though. That's uh, 20. Oh! 
Oh my god, that's exactly the number you needed. <laughs> Let's go. Oh, Let's go. Uh, How do you want to do this? Uh, I just like kind of like a gesture as if throwing the spiritual weapon and it's just gonna like fly through the air uh and just like gently bop it on the head uh in order to make it like not completely break it so tink can try to fix it <laughs> uh, so it's just gonna be like this fierce and there's squeak and it's just go, <laughs> the perfect perfect spot Ooh, falls over perfect this thing pressure. falls over uh mint still on its hand uh but now that we're out of the initiative order let's go ahead and take our break everybody go pee pee in the potty get your water and we'll be right back chat mm. 32 set hut set hut Height. and he's going deep he's going deep he's going deep hail mary all Amos. right welcome back let's jump right back into it so the uh, metaphorical dust settles as you guys kind of take in the scene. Uh, it took you guys a little bit of time, not an extreme amount of time, but a little bit of time to get to the scene. And the first thing that you immediately notice is that Mint is still impaled on this mining drone's huh. arm and is kind of just kind of sitting there gasping for breath, probably needing a little bit of assistance. But the rest of the room right now is in just complete disarray. I will... There's plants everywhere broken glass, broken wood. Get into more detail about it. I will pop a aura vitality and just start helping people in general, including Mint. Okay. So, you, do you want to try and remove Mint? Yeah, I've got a plus seven to medicine. Can I? Yeah, go ahead and roll me a medicine check. Okay. I'm going to slap some guidance on and, uh, and also assist. No, so, oh, let's go. Guidance and advantage. Mm-hmm. What's guidance again for you? D4. D4. Okay, that... Hell yeah, let's go. Um, 19 plus 7, 26. 26? Okay, yeah. You can get him off of this thing without, like, doing any more immediate damage to him and kind of stop the bleeding. Get you got you. Stabilized. It's okay. Mint, uh, after you remove him from the thing, is, like, kind of, like, rolling around. Not like he's like writhing in pain, but he's like trying to crane his neck to look at the room and kind of take everything in. Take it easy. It's going to be okay. We're going we're gonna to get everybody patched right up. They... No, there's... Oh, my Lord. And you're like looking around and you see like uh, just, just this wave of dread wash over him as he starts to like look around and he goes pale in the face and falls quiet as he's just kind of like lost for words looking around the room. Um, Marrow, you said you were going to go around and like help everybody out. Yeah, once he's stabilized, more or less. So, as you go around the room to like help, because there were normal people in the room when this attack happened. Peasants. Um, Sorry. <laughs> the uh, the the sight is pretty gruesome. I don't know what Marrow has experienced in his life, but it's pretty. It doesn't sit well in your tummy. Um, some people are still conscious clearly in a lot of pain uh but you're looking around and you see these oh. effectively recovering slurpium vid uh, victims or addicts people hmm. have been using this substance to make them younger you see what visually appears to be like smaller framed humans like laying face down in some of the debris oh. um as you kind of like view the scene um most people that you go around to are kind of like dazed and you can kind of help them out but there are a couple people that are non, a couple forms that are non-responsive. I'm gonna look over to the party and be like, "We need to figure out who did this." The mining operation. It is clear by their visage that they have sent these assassins clad in armor. Mm. We shall clad them in arrows. Mint, where can we find this mining operations base? There, oh lord. They have a seat on the council, so you could go to, I mean, kind of winces a bit. You could go to council and talk to whoever the head is. I don't know when the next meeting's supposed to be. It's like every third Thursday or something. I don't know. 
It's like, or you could go, they have like a, a union chapter. That's in the northeast side of town, close to where like the great, the ancient drill was found and the first like mining tunnels were set up. You could go there. But yeah, that's, that's about it. Cloak and dagger seems more my speed than presidential council meetings. You know what they say the rest. <laughs> Maybe we There's could... a lot of them. Mm-hmm. Tink, can you get one of these mechanical death traps working under our influence? Certainly try again. I feel like I have a firmer grasp on what, how they work, but I mean, it will comply. I make it. <laughs> Tink's gonna like train this thing. <laughs> perfect balance between yes. barbarian and artificer so <laughs> this go around uh, buff tank uh, the DC is going to be lower because you've done it once before I'll give you advantage um, da, 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 and then it'll be an intelligence check um, I can buffer on a reaction <laughs> what, what intelligence based skills are you proficient in uh history and nature okay and yeah i can't i can't i can't give you your wait but you have tool proficiency ah yes thank you you have tool tool expertise so you can use your artificers tinkers tools and give yourself expertise in the given skill of your choice that one okay Mm -hmm. so which one would i need for that check it would be well it's going to be d20 plus in plus double proficiency yeah could just be any check a flat intelligence yeah. and then i'm going to give her a d6 on my reaction issue if I that's okay mm-hmm. Slap. wait jake you giving guidance <laughs> can you double guidance the stack you, you can't you can't okay jake you're muted there i just couldn't hear you Dang it. Okay. Cosmic Can, Omen. Is Mint a bard? Yes. Mint gives her bardic inspiration while he's having a terrible time at a D8 as well. <laughs> okay. Okay, so a D4, a D6, and a D8 with double proficiency bonus and intelligence bonus. Yeah, not, not to the degree where it would distract her, but I'm behind her just weaving these constellations to help. Should be a plus. Should be. Oof. She got a little constellation halo. My calculator. <laughs> Thirty-four. Let's go. (laughs) All right. So Tink, Ant Man in the Iron Man suit, flies into this thing again. Starts tinking around, and over the course of an hour, at the end of the hour, you will have a uh, a mining dog, granted with only one hand. Um. So that'll happen over the course of. As I was just about to say, if you guys want to take a short rest, go ahead and do that. Sure. Um. And Meryl will just kind of be hanging out with you while Tink does the tinkering. You know I will always take a cheeky short rest. Can I mend the chain that he cut through? Yes. Connecting the hand? Mm-hmm. So it'll be nice. back in full operation. Let's go. So it'll give it... Uh, I'm just, like, using my spiritual weapon as a hammer to, like, do the mend. <laughs> like, squeak, so squeak, 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 yeah. <laughs> Mushroom, mushroom. <laughs> That's so good. <laughs> mushroom. Snake, snake. Oh, it's a snake. It's a bunch of, bunch of, bunch of. Mushroom, <laughs> mushroom. I'm trying to get oh, my man. health back on my short rest, but it's not working. You have to, like, 
go to short rest, yeah. click the dice, and then when you say take short rest, make sure you click it again. So <laughs> yeah, I roll. I am. <coughs> it's not working. I'll figure uh, it out. Click, click it, then click the dice. Like the dice section is 40, 10 plus 8. Yeah. Click. No. I don't know. It's all good. It's all good. Sometimes life sucks and then you die. Like, that's just <laughs> that's that's what that's what Hobbes said in his in his seminal work Leviathan. I think that at least said life's nasty, brutish, and short. So I think that means life sucks. Yeah, that's basically and then you die. life sucks and then you die. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty close. All right, let me know when we're all we're all short rested. You know I'm rested. Luna, what are you drinking? The sus water? Arizona okay. green <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen Luna drink. I'm not drunk on was, stream. I don't, I, was oh, like, I don't think Luna's okay, old okay. enough to drink. I'm 21, so. You are? Yeah. How she's been, you she's been gaming was? with us for a while. We've had this conversation before. How long have you been playing with us? Over a year. <laughs> About a year and a half. At some point, she crossed the threshold, Taco. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh. She's cool now. She can hang. She can hang? <laughs> Luna parties? <laughs> hey, Luna. You a party? <laughs> Not really. <laughs> I'm more uh, staying home with my book. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Luna's like an on old effective. wine <laughs> Probably. Do you do you drink several bottles of wine while reading said book? I haven't at this point. Okay. <laughs> I have. You have? Oh yeah. How do, the, how do you keep reading the words? <laughs> we all wibbly wobbly. Start making uh, them up at a certain point. You know, he gets you'd be good. surprised. You'd be surprised how many theater books I've read and written essays on that I definitely got too drunk to read halfway through <laughs> and just made up the ending. <laughs> and I wrote the essay on my interpretation of my made up ending and got a 95. So I don't think it matters. School's a lie. Jeez. School's a fucking sham. Oh, it's not a sham. I, the, the professor's like, wow, what a crazy interpretation of that ending. And I'm like, I know, right? <laughs> You <laughs> can't say you're wrong because it's just your interpretation. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, yeah, did you remember that part where Macbeth went into hell? He's like, what? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, what? <laughs> <laughs> like, whoa, crazy. <laughs> yeah, that's why he's uh, like, I'd like to uh, reference it back and be like, why did I think he went to hell? And I'm like, I guess I gotta <laughs> make this make sense. <laughs> uh Continuing down our sidetrack real quick, I, I read a a post by an English teacher who was talking about how her class was reading Macbeth, and there was a student who was very adamant about uh, playing the role, while they read it together, playing the role of Lady Macbeth. And it developed to the point to where the kid was like, it was two dudes playing Macbeth and Lady Macbeth, and they were just being... Yeah, and they were just being like hella sus with each other and like holding hands during the reading and stuff. And Lady Macbeth's fucking uh, girlfriend was like in the class and like very visibly jealous of the romance going between the two people acting <laughs> and being like, no, I just think this book's, I just think this book's stupid. <laughs> and like other, uh, other teachers were like, so how are the two lords in the English class? <laughs> I loved it. That's fucking I, awesome. As, as a guy who went, as a person who went to a fucking an all guys Catholic school, just surrounded by sussy testosterone, it is exactly the type of shit that I would imagine. <laughs> Yeah, sussy testosterone just makes altering. you sus. There's been numerous cases where people go on tea and they're immediately like, am I gay now? <laughs> <laughs> That's the shit. That's why Tucker Carlson wants everyone to tan their scrotum so that they can up the tea levels. Okay, but let's... Have... <laughs> <laughs> let, let me grab the reins a little bit. I'm not even for the DM. I can't. <laughs> That's why I'm actually bi now. <laughs> tan with scrot too much. I almost spit my drink all over my keyboard. <laughs> but also, that's not a joke to the audience. I am. <laughs> Neither is Tucker Carlson telling people to tan their scrotes. <laughs> that's also real. That's real life. That, that is the current timeline, my guy. <laughs> that's where we're at. 
Stop making me laugh. You kill me. You wanted to scream tonight. <laughs> Mushroom, keep me safe. Not for me. <laughs> what, you can't tell I'm stalling because I thought we weren't going to play because Offbeat was sick? <laughs> All right, anyways. You guys take your short rest over the span of an hour. Is there any any anything specifically you guys want to do or do you just want me to <clears throat> tell you what's going on? Because Mer or not Mero, uh, Min's not having a good time, but he's feeling a little better after the short rest. Um, He told you guys like basically where you could find people who are affiliated with the miners union. Um, what else you need? I want to know where, where, where they live. <laughs> you want to know? <laughs> I mean, we're stealthy. Well, why would we you see, make a meeting and, and make a sales pitch at them to stop being so shitty when we can solve some problems <laughs> in the dead Mero, of night? <laughs> or, Mint is like, a, well, you know, you see, whenever someone purchases property here in town it's kept on the public record so if you wanted to go down to you know like <clears throat> the like county records office you could like pull all the properties in the place and figure out where all the people who work for the miners union work and, you know you just need their that but i'm just saying it's an idea dig through paperwork they're not above just wholesale slaughtering people I mean, the dead of night. It's I mean, prime time for hunting. I mean, I've been down here for like quite some time, but I, I feel like when you guys went and talked to that snake dude, it was like 10 a.m. and it's only been like a couple hours. <laughs> but besides, oh wait, no, it's totally nighttime because y'all took a nap. Yes. It's totally did. nighttime. <clears throat> Two hours Anyhow. to fix a robot and then a long rest and then another hour and, and to fix another robot. <laughs> yeah. But I mean I told told y'all this at the beginning. There was the guy who was making these things is like kind of getting a little big for his britches and like you know, like claiming the attacks now at this point. So but it's we not need like to burn those britches. Take his pants looms right off. Spank him. Who's the so you know the person who I know these things? I know the alias. Oh. What is this but alias? Have you seen The Incredibles? You mean the hit Pixar movie released in two thousand and something? Yes. I'm quite yeah. Two thousand four. Yes. Yeah. I don't, no, you know, like right at the very end, the mole man. <laughs> I want you to miner. imagine the underminer. He kind of looks like that feller. I see. But the world but yeah. will know pain. But anyhow, play Naruto music. No. Play Naruto. <laughs> I can't. It'll be copyright stricken. Abepsa. Right. Play <laughs> Naruto music. Well, then imagine. <laughs> Imagine, imagine music. Naruto music. <laughs> it's like imagining dragons, but it's Naruto music. Imagine oh, dragons. the misery. Everybody <laughs> wants to be my enemy. Anyway, where might this underminer's base of operations be other than in the mines themselves? I was... was... Yep, you nailed it. God damn it. <laughs> in that case, I imagine he probably sleeps there too working tirelessly on his creations. Man, you know a lot. Are you him? If I was him, you'd already be dead. That's fair. That's fair. Why would I need to kill you? I output more than these robots. Yeah, That's you, valid. Something, something he puts out. I don't know. I put out <laughs> so much. Anyway, I yeah, say... I want to push the button. <laughs> a lot of quill. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways I say party we make our way to these mines sneak in at night and show this man what it's like to drop trow <laughs> Mero kind of nods I don't know what what all that is but I sure yeah I'm down 
Aside from the strange metaphor, yeah, I say that's the that's the play. Is Tink done rebuilding the thing? Yes, Tink is done rebuilding the thing. It's like, I think it's a good idea, especially now seeing that we have Pruton, the destroyer. Pruton? <laughs> The Destroyer. I've always wanted a dog named Crouton. I'm sorry. No, don't apologize. God's not mad. <laughs> is this Tink or is this Luna talking? This is, this is Tink. <laughs> Does Luna want a dog named Crouton? Anyways. I'm so frankly a little supply surprised you're so into salad. <laughs> Crouton. You will be our greatest ally yet. Similar to how you are an ally to vegetables in a salad. Crouton whirs agreeably. What, what does that you. sound Ain't like, Mr. Crouton is just stale <laughs> bread. <laughs> Those are not Seasoned. croutons. Seasoned stale bread. Oh, all right. All right. Seasoned stale bread. Used Twice baked. Did you know that you... I'm not finishing my statement. Anyway, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> this is not a fun fact. I would say at this time, I will save it for later. <laughs> Perhaps when eggs are more pertinent to the current situation. Taco starts writing right. down notes. <laughs> <laughs> Crouton joins the party. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So, how do you guys want to proceed? You guys are currently uh, down in this the the ruins of this rehabilitation center uh are you gonna like escort mint anywhere he's gonna i mean he we, we came to him he's good yeah he he's like functional um but how do you guys want to proceed going wherever it is that you want to go are we going to be options look like we could go up into the city and move and then go down or we could try to find our way through the sewers Maybe there's a possible access from there. Um, Do have a map. That's true. You do have a map. Um, I don't know if the sewers would find a place where they would connect oh, to. I've got an idea. Uh, hit, hit us with it. Uh, well, Dane here has maps and he's learned and all that stuff. Maybe we could just walk mm. into the mines and, and he could be all like, hey, I'm supposed to be here. You know, I've got the credentials. I've got the heckin' Probably, map. Yes. You know? It wouldn't be the first time that I've uh, researched the uh, discovered drill yes. artifacts. Into the burrows. Very strange research assistance <laughs> oh me um fair <laughs> okay so how do we want to how do we want to go there are we going to go up or are we going to try and find a way down i don't know if i can figure out a way for you guys to sounds like we have to go up then yeah yeah because you got to get to the entrance or it would take it would you could probably find a way. It would just take some time navigating a dungeon that would be created as it was as you walk through it. Let us ascend. All right. Um. Where do you guys want to pop out? You guys know how to get to popping out by the bank, popping out uh, in the alleyway where you guys were before. Um. Other options of places where you guys could go. You guys could pop out somewhere close to like the town center with the council thing. The mine entrance is like just outside of town to the northeast. Um, probably as northeast as we can get. Oh wait. Also, quick question. Uh, Ed's uh, Ed gave us aid like a while ago. Is that mm -hmm. still in effect? That's gonna run out. Yeah, that would have oh. actually ran out after a long rest because we last eight oh. hours. And that went Man. to, um, I think, Dane, uh, Porky, and Tink, I believe. Mm -hmm. I was just checking, because I just realized, I was like, I've got too much HP. What a problem to have. Um, has it been a full 24 hours since we left the uh, original cave? 
The original cave? Like, yes. Okay, so we no longer have our... Um, the... The first cave with Sniff Sniff? Yes. The second cave with the Bone Claws? It's coming up. Okay, okay. So the Bone Claws, when I cast uh, Hero's Feast. Because that's, that's 24 hours. Yeah. How much did we get from that? What did we get from that again? 18. 18, right. <clears throat> and advantage against being charmed, I think. Uh, immune to... Immune? Uh, poison. Oh, nice. okay. okay. Awesome. Good to know. Uh, advantage on wisdom saving throws, I believe. That's what it was. Okay. All right. Immune to poison and being frightened and makes all wisdom saving throws with advantage. Pondering. Okay, I'm going to roll a dice real quick. Something out. So you guys navigate your way through the sewer um, using the bushels of flowers flowers to get back to where you were, um, walking through the walls and stuff like that. Um, and using Dane's knowledge of the maps, head as close to true northeast as you can um, and eventually find yourselves at uh, underneath a manhole cover that would allow you guys to ascend up into the... Uh, outside of the city like right on the edge it's still in town but right before it transitions to like outside okay up we go who's going up first uh i will go up first and ascend stealthily all right roll me a stealth check and then hit me with a perception that is going to be uh we don't have pass without trace currently do nope we? we do not Satch. That is going to be all the same, a 21. <clears throat> all right. So you slide up uh, past the manhole cover, and you look around, you don't see anything. But as you listen out, you hear what sounds like a group of, you hear a collective of footsteps that sounds akin to marching, almost like they're moving in lockstep. Uh-oh. Sounds like a patrol. We must move with great stealth. Rabbit. We must pass <laughs> without trace. Oh. Is this the time? I believe this would be the time if we are to make it to the caves unnoticed. Oh. Hmm. Well, okay. Simba. <laughs> <laughs> Remember Clap of Ash you are <clears throat> Poof Plus 10 to self Alright Alexandria has given off beat Inspiration Thank you Narian <laughs> Lest we forget last week <laughs> Lest we forget <laughs> That was such a good episode Ah, That's great I want to play that character again. Nova Wake. It's fucking awesome. I want to explore more of the astral shenanigans. That's just bonkers. Well, next time we need a one shot, we know what to do. Thanks. All right. Actually, that trace is so good. Jeez. It is so good. It is a contender. Are we all doing stealthies? Yeah. I'm rolling at disadvantage, and I got a four. <clears throat> but with everything else, it's 20. <laughs> Nice. 36. I had to waste my good roll on this. Hmm, 33. 35. <coughs> Does the dog have to roll? Crouton? Oh, yeah. Well, he's got plus 10, too. I Simba he's Crouton. He's got a minus one, so plus nine in total. Hmm. I'll cast Guidance on him. Wait, hold on. How are we getting Crouton out of the manhole? Big and small. Bold Earth. <laughs> Can make him small. Cast reduce enlarge reduce on him. Nice. Yeah. I don't know how that. I don't know how big he was. So I don't know if he's like fit or not. <laughs> yeah, no, that'll that'll make it to where you can get him out. All right. So he gets tiny. <laughs> oh. 
little, little crouton. Oh, no. But, okay. So you guys are scampering outside of town to go towards the mine shaft. Mm-hmm. From crouton to croutini. <laughs> little crout. <laughs> Crutonissimo. <laughs> crouton to punko. The breadcrumb. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so as you guys leave town, um, town is relatively dark. You guys head off into the... Oh, wow. Hello. Hi, hey, guys. <laughs> um, <laughs> God? <laughs> you guys head off into the night into the direction of the mine shafts. Um, as you guys leave, that uh, all of you become aware of that sound of the lockstep uh, mm. occurring from inside of town as you guys are leaving. <laughs> Do we maybe catch a glimpse of it? If I have uh, an exceptionally high perception check. Hold my ears down, peak. <laughs> you would see... Um, Porky, you would have seen, uh, like, rounding a corner, like, going, like, traversing on the main road. Uh, like, the tail end of, like, a number of people um, in common clothes walking through the street uh, going towards town center. Interesting. Commoners, but with that level of organization suggests manipulation. Either a tradition <laughs> or a manipulation of the magical variety. What are traditions but manipulation? Well, I, I would scarcely people. say that about, like, you know, a birthday cake. <laughs> 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 But there's an argument to be made about some traditions. I, I do prefer the traditions that I get presents at. Those ones are, I think are. You remember fun. when it was culturally that normative is... to breathe on the candles in the cake and then share that with everybody? You know. Yeah. Now you die. <laughs> <laughs> Times be yeah, a changing. Guys, in other, in, in unrelated news, you're all invited to my birthday party. <laughs> <laughs> Especially you, chat. You know what you did. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but you guys see that as you're dipping, slipping out of town. <clears throat> cool. Interesting. Noted. You want me to go snoop no, that have, out? Okay. We have bigger fish to fry. Oh, okay. Most importantly, a miner. Note to but self. Not of the child variety, as those are abundant, but of the digging variety. Note to self. Also don't be a abundant. fish around Porky. It, it, it might be a miner, miner. We don't, we don't know yet. An underminer, miner. <laughs> oh my God. Or maybe a, uh, maybe a miner, 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 miner. <laughs> maybe a major, a major miner, underminer. Did they were they once a major or were they nook and they, they now they're a minor? These questions keep amplifying. We must seek elucidation through vengeance. Cast, well, this conversation cast happens. Augury, no. <laughs> as this conversation happens, as you guys continue further outside of town, uh, eventually you get to a small cliff face where there is a we've all seen mine shafts, you know, little two pieces of wood, wood going across. Um Outside, it's all dark right now. Everything is just pitch black. You're away from any uh, artificial or torch illumination. Um, so who is dark vision? We'll start there. Me. Okay. I do. Uh, who who wants dark vision? Who doesn't have it? <laughs> so I can share it. I mean, fair. I also have ten feet of blind sight. Tink needs it looks like up to four willing creatures i can give uh dark vision up to 300 feet i mean i'll take more mine's yeah, 60. I mean, 300 I'll, yeah over. so who doesn't have it though tink and uh tink and crouton i don't yeah. know if i, I can, can go without i'll check on crouton i can go without crouton has 120 feet of dark vision he's okay. chilling all right so makes sense tink. he mines <laughs> Yeah, I can give it to all of you. All right, word. Yeah, four. So, so we all have dark vision for the entropy. Nice, nice. Oh, by the way, Crouton understands common, huh? But can't talk. Good. <laughs> oh, that was really important. 
we can't make miscellaneous comments. But can you also understand if I'm like, because <laughs> <laughs> you understand that? Blank stare. <laughs> it's mildly offended. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was gonna say. I was like, yeah, but you probably said some fucked up shit. <laughs> like, what? If, what if that's just what Ed thinks it says? But it's just like, no, <laughs> I speak common. <laughs> well, under- All right. So- and get around this this language barrier like I'm just talk normal i don't understand ed, ed, ed you're gonna we're canceling you on twitter <laughs> and by that i mean i'm killing you <laughs> veil that, twitter that's fair <laughs> it's just accepts it <laughs> uh luna i just sent you the stat basically yes. the stat sheet for uh yeah, let me go with the tweaks to it um, scout out right, the so. entrance. I can scuttle down there as a little creature or something. I don't know. Yeah. So let me set the scene real quick. So there is the, the primary entrance that appears to just go down. Since everyone has dark vision, you can see that there are uh, what appear to be lights, like set into pieces of wood that go further down. To the left of the entrance, there is a uh, like a square wooden shack that doesn't have any light coming out of it right now. Um, and then around the entrance, there's what appears to be like little, like hangout spots. Like there's a couple spots that have like uh, like chairs around, um, like what would have been fire pits that have no fire going in them, just soot and ash. Um, just places for people to hang out before either going into work or after coming out from work, stuff like that. Why is it so empty? Why aren't there people? It's the oh, middle it's, of the night. It's the middle of the night. Right. I'm going to bask in the starlight. Well, it seems it is high time to pursue our operation. Operation Assassinate the Miner Underminer. <laughs> and make them major deceased. You're doing so, great, uh, bud. <laughs> thank you, I know. <laughs> Porky is very proud of himself in this moment. <laughs> All right, uh, you guys entering the mine shaft, or are we poking around up top? I think we're getting in there. Yeah, so getting in there. For it. But if we All want right. to, I can even lead since it's probably down, been down here before. Yeah. Just again okay, because so you, of the artifact. You would know that there's like a mine cart system that runs through the whole thing. You would also, because you've been down here before, you would know that these lights that are currently not illuminated can be turned on. Um, there is like a a fantasy like electrical box and fuses uh like a breaker in that shack so if you wanted to hit the lights you have that option there there's the mine cart that goes through the whole thing um but you would also be aware of that this shaft being the original is relatively extensive the OG it is shaft. going to be very dark unless we turn on those lights but we have dark vision And yeah, hopefully we... they don't have dark vision. All right, yeah, fair. So, also to you guys, I'm invisible to you currently because you have dark vision. I have blind sight 10 feet. Invisible Only sure, every, every now and then I'm like, oh, there he is! <laughs> <laughs> I appear like the night. <clears throat> and I cough. This is a porcupine illness. COVID-15. I hate it here. <laughs> Alright. We traversing down then no light? Yep, 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 yep. Here, are we like hoofing it. it or are we going to utilize the mind curry system? Hmm. Roller coaster or footsteps? I would... What's... Roller coaster sounds fun. Roller coaster sounds fun, yes, but it also would take us to... Places that everyone can get to. If we're going by foot, we might find little nooks and crannies and secret passageways. It's a, it's a mine. Oh, okay, that's fair. What we could do is take the cart most of the way, oh. and then exit the cart, and then sabotage it, or just let it continue, oh. and it would serve as a distraction. That's good too. 
I like the way you think, intelligent man. Ah! <laughs> 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 so cart part of the way, then let it go down afterwards. Mm -hmm. Okay. I cool. assume there's a, a break handle. Yeah. I've seen Indiana Jones. I know how it works. I'm a there's only one size though. creature, so it's just little ears. <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm making all of you get into the same cart. Um, <laughs> anyways, you guys get into this. Uh, I'm going to assume that Dane is the one operating the like brake to maintain sure. speed and Sounds everything. Great. I mean, you, you're the most experienced in this realm. So you guys hop on in. So for those of you who aren't familiar with this, this is a uh, mad fucking sketchy. <laughs> <laughs> But are we talking like Donkey Kong Country level sketchy, or just because that's a little too sketchy? Not that sketchy. Just if you haven't okay. done this before, this this feels like this shouldn't be how this operates. Oh no, if you, were you're meant like to this, go this feels fast. unsafe. Why do people do this all the time? <laughs> Mortals were never meant to go this fast. <laughs> so, you guys push off from this from the start, and immediately the thing just pitches down going down the shaft there is the wind is howling as you guys are going down um quite far quite fast uh anyone who's taking the time to like look around because there's a number of offshoots as you guys go down like there's a, a, a quite a lot of options can I make a um, perception check yeah anybody who wants to can make me a perception check to like look around and see what's going on as you go down that is a nat one but i do have plus 11 so oh. that's 12. 19. 7. It's mostly 7 as well. Just trying to hop up and see things every now and then. Just 28. <laughs> okay, so uh, Dane and uh, Deca, Dead, Deca Ed, um, you guys, like as you go down, you see that in some of like the shorter offshoots from the main shaft, you see a little glints of metal. And when you start to look for it, you notice that at the end of some of these shafts, there are uh, powered down versions of those mining drones slash mining golems that you guys had to dispatch earlier. They're just kind of scattered haphazardly throughout like they've been turned off at the end of the day. We are in the salad. Mm. Oh, yeah. But you guys continue down for a little bit more. Uh, Dane, you would be able to surmise that you're probably about like halfway until the end of the track at this point after about like a minute and a half of riding in this thing and just hauling ass. I'm thinking like we ride two thirds, two thirds, three fourths. Sure, I don't know. No so four fifths. You got the brakes, brother. What you? Yeah, you got the you got the brakes. How you feeling? Uh, we'll do two thirds. Okay. Okay. Hop you guys out. go down exactly to the to the centimeter. Two thirds of the way down the track. Yeah, I was counting. Yeah. Mathematically <laughs> sound. <laughs> so are you are you guys just jumping or are you pulling the brake lever to stop? Up yeah, up brake and 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 slow slash stop. Okay. So Dan throws on the brake, you look behind you, there's like a there's a little bit of light as sparks fly off the track, and there's this loud screech that echoes throughout the cavern. Um yeah, it's an unpleasant sound, and you hear it reverberate through just this number of this massive network of tunnels. Um but then you guys can all get out. Um, options it on now. Its way quickly before they come and investigate and pinpoint the direction of the screech. So, Dane, you would know, having been down here before, um, that the mine track acts as like the spine of the system, right? You can basically get to anywhere. Think of it like an interstate. So, you could continue to follow it down, and then the branches off from there basically. Uh, like fork off until they were deemed like either they can't continue to be dug or there wasn't enough <clears throat> or to justify continuing stuff like that you would know that there are like stations so there's a couple things so for like safety precautions there are like little huts or like alcoves carved out into things that have like supplies and stuff in like the case of like a cave-in or an explosion or things like that that just that way you don't have to bring tools all the way down and back and forth. Um, you would also know that there are, uh, for some reason, probably because of the union, 
there's a couple like either storerooms or break rooms scattered throughout this thing because the union was very adamant about making sure that people got their lunches and they didn't have to go all the way to the surface for that. Um, you would also know that due to the size of all of the golems and everything, that most of the maintenance and building, it's kind of like uh, the golems most of the time are constructed in the mines. Like they arrive in parts and then they're assembled in there because we're working with tight shafts and everything. So unless we're like having them dig all the way straight down, it's kind of a pain in the ass to get them down here. So there has to be somewhere where they're like, stored, repaired, things like that. Um, and you would know that that would be probably about three-fourths of the way down. Uh, like, probably about like 200 feet to the left, there's like a, uh, of the main track, there's like a big room where all of the maintenance would occur. Well, if we want to check the maintenance uh, area, it is this way. Oh. Right. We're going to go ahead and, I guess, push the cart to continue down the track. That's pretty send wise. it on down. Yeah, send it on down. Right. You go ahead and push the thing. It takes off roaring down. Lots of loud metal noises. It's like rocking back and forth as it's weaving through the tunnels. That was a good um, call. Yeah, and it Leaves the party. <laughs> oh no, Kurtan was still in there. No. <laughs> Kurtan's just like, Come on. <laughs> oh yeah, Kruton in here, his head is like scraping the top of the shaft. Everything's pretty compact, just to kind of like, if anyone has any issues with claustrophobia, you're probably a little bit uncomfortable at this, but you're maximum. It's basically as wide as Kruton. So we're talking like 10 feet across, maybe six to seven feet high if that, and it ebbs and flows a little bit depending on the uh, makeup of the rock. I am remembering that uh, at the beginning of this campaign, I said, or the summer series, I said that this was a medium sized marrow, not small sized marrow. So I am going to mm -hmm. say he's a little claustrophobic. He wishes he was seeing the stars, but he's not super unfamiliar with uh, tunnel networking because, you know, Warren's rabbits, I got. I got holes that they live in. Ricky feels right at home in the close darkness. All right. <laughs> just wanted it. to make sure. Good job, Porky. <laughs> just wanted to make sure that everyone was aware. He says right, that so... out loud. <laughs> <laughs> so, Dane, are you leading them towards the maintenance area? How does the? How uh, are we proceeding yeah, here? sure. Why not? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's what we'll do. I'll be up there with him. Like right on his, right on his six. All right. Can I get marching order? Uh, I'll go up front. Yeah. Okay. Oh. But like, I'll be close enough to receive orders from Dane, as I am a bloodhound. I'll take the rear. Okay. And I'll put Tink in the middle. Uh, where do you guys? Where do you guys want Crouton? We could put him in the back too, because he'd be like a shield if something came up behind us. Big brain. That's, that's, that's brains. Dog. Dog. Okay. You guys continue down. Um, uh, Dane leading the way or giving instructions to Porky, whoever's at the very front, uh, telling you which way to go. Mm -hmm. Eventually, guys, you take a couple uh, left turns, branching off from the main spine. Um, when you do that, the uh, tunnels start to constrict even more, making it to where the party's going to have to walk pretty close to single file and there are like light sounds of metal scraping on stone as crouton is like this thing is literally this tunnel is literally as wide as him because something the exact same size as him is what dug this um that's terrifying actually <laughs> uh wait no i can never mind nothing porky go ahead and roll me perception check depending on how you're proceeding i'm gonna guidance myself that is a 16 plus 11, so a 27. 27. Okay. Dane, you would know that you're starting to get, like, closer to this maintenance area. And Porky, um, you start to notice uh, patches of discoloration in the stone, like in 
oddly circular shapes. This is the second time we've seen this. Is it? Circular discoloration or like circular things. I don't know. I'm just going to mark that in my head. If I see it a third time, then it's a recurring theme. Can I make a nature check to see if it's natural or unnatural or? Yeah. How do you want to go about looking at this? Uh, well, it's black and white because not, uh, because dark vision, so I don't mm -hmm. have much to work with. But uh, I'll tell it to you like this: if you want to walk up to it to like inspect it, that'll lower the DC. But trying to like discern exactly what's going on with these patches of stone from like back is gonna make it more difficult. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'll 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 kind of approach it. Okay. Um, kind of look at it sideways, give it a. <laughs> When you get within about 10 feet of the thing, okay. uh, oh, no. <laughs> oh God, you guys hear like a clockwork uh, whir of machinery and the part of the cave wall, some dust crumbles to the ground and a brass clockwork, what looks like almost like a, like a Heimerdinger turret, like a little turret, like a sprinkler with a gun pops out of the side of the cave and launches two bolts down the hallway. Uh, just Mero, can you make me a dexterity saving throw? Oh, hell yeah. Dexterous as fuck. I don't know. Uh, okay. 19. 19. So this thing pops out of the wall, shoots two bolts at you, and you jump to the side. Oh my god, you guys are in a. You guys, are, you got, you have to eat half damage on this, my guy. I'm sorry. Okay, <laughs> because otherwise fine, it's fine. hitting other people. Because there's not a way for this to make it through the tunnel without taking everyone out. Okay, yeah, so you just take yeah. six. You take half of thirteen, so you're taking six points of piercing damage as this thing launches bolts, and then you hear more machinery working as it appears to be like reloading. Oh, oh, it's it's go it's gonna be again. Oh, where is it? I Maybe just move away from the mark. Ah, uh, yeah, I'll I'll back away from the mark. Um. Gosh. Yeah, I'll back away from the market and see if that changes anything. If it doesn't, I've got a few ideas. So you back away from the mark, and once you're about 15 feet away from the thing, there is a, uh, like a, uh, I'm trying to figure out the words to describe this. Like a, uh, flat plane of light that scans the width of the tunnel and then goes from the right side all the way to the left and back to the right and then after that you hear a shunk and the, a little bit of whirring as the thing is returned back to being flush with the wall I toss a rock at the discolored stone to see if it works for inanimate objects it uh dinks the rock or it dinks the side of the thing but then it doesn't respond okay it must be it must be so that it prevents personnel from coming down into here yeah, well, probably... walk within 10 15 feet of the thing this is a very narrow corridor exactly i imagine it won't work on our crouton friend oh. Oh. this is a crouton tunnel only Can this hole you... belongs to crouton you will have to walk all the way back out in order to yes. get Crouton to the front. It's you, okay. you guys could like, it, we could, like, like climb on and just let him. Ride I can it actually through, or... move uh, under. I can actually whoop, go right under him because the heron gone. Yeah, you you got. It would take a little bit of doing, and it would be comical and uncomfortable. But you guys could squeeze <laughs> by. Uh, I'm gonna require just because I want this for me uh, to squeeze past Crouton. I'm gonna require a real low dexterity check. <laughs> Myself included with the ability. Not you. Okay. You well, being Beth. Cool. That is a. <laughs> you wanted a limbo. really low dexterity check? Yeah. <laughs> I think you got How one. low is low? <laughs> <laughs> DC's 10. <laughs> uh, well, that's in that one. Plus, <laughs> plus three. Uh, and it's just dex. Oh, have a D6. Yeah. Have a D6. Have nah, a D6. man, that's a crit fail. Bam. That's a crit fail. Oh. So, uh, yeah, five, you know, with my skills. <laughs> so, Ed did it. 
tries to squeeze past Crouton and he makes it about halfway and then just gets completely stuck. And like, you can't move one way or another and Crouton like can't move one way or another because you guys oh, are just easy. like flush this thing as like panic just starts to set in. Like you feel your heart rate increase as that initial like, oh fuck me, I'm stuck. I don't, I don't like it. I don't, I don't like it. Come I don't down. like it. I, I, I don't okay. at this point. In, at Make this a duck and save me. I don't like it. Maybe that starts I maybe three three praying to smallest duckus. So I time. rolled an eight. Um, I just would like to mention to the group that I rolled an eight total on this yeah, dexterity you, you check. And, so how <laughs> this just occurred? Just squished yeah. it. <laughs> so how this occurred is both of you guys didn't decide who was going to go first. Porky went on one side and edited it and went on the other side. And now you guys are just sandwiched. Why must this large duck be the thing that obstructs, obstructs justice? T Tink, tell tell Kruta not to move, or they're paced. I would prefer to be paced than no. a sandwich. Okay, um, let me let me peruse my skills. I am the skills. bread of a crouton sandwich. This is misery. You're doing a great job, buddy. Keep I, talking. I'm bread too. We're both bread. Wait a minute. This is horrendous. <laughs> my name is bread. I'm old bread. <laughs> So the it, the cavern walls or the mine shaft is pretty much entirely made up of stone, or is it yeah. kind of like a dirt mix? No, nah, with how deep you guys are, this is just this is stone. Uh, Help, <clears throat> Hank! Can you do that that grease thing you did again? Yeah. I I, I, oh my I God. can. I don't I don't know why we're trying to sneak past it. I can make it small again. I don't know what I'm thinking. Do that. <laughs> do it now. Or <laughs> well, you know, do it to them. That'd be hilarious. <laughs> Small Crouton Max shrinks. <laughs> Crouton becomes Roomba <laughs> and whirs up to the front of the group and then sits there, arms ready, <clears throat> waiting to be big again. <laughs> that was embarrassing. It, it really was, yeah. I do not like being a sandwich. Can we just agree to never speak of this again? No. We need a time when we became a crouton sandwich. <laughs> and who was on top? Who was the top of the sandwich? And who was the bottom? I'm pretty sure it was crouton. I'm pretty sure it was <laughs> <laughs> This is unfortunately the truth. He has the meats. <laughs> <laughs> Are you dropping concentration to make Crouton big again? Yes. <laughs> okay, Crouton, Crouton grows and fills up the tunnel again. Uh, everybody's behind him. But as Porky suspected, if you guys try to move forward, as long as uh, Crouton is at the front, you guys stay pretty close to the back. It, the first one doesn't appear to uh, trigger. Mm. It's basically like, ah, Robin. Just as planned. What's my cutoff time? Uh, you have 14 minutes. 15 minutes? Okay. All right. Do you guys wish to proceed down the tunnel? Can we have it check out the rock? Crouton? Minor? Yeah. Right? That was the plan? That's why we all shuffled? Mm, no, we did. We did no, right. so onward. We proceed down the tunnel. Onward. Yeah. Sorry. Cr Crouton's acting is like a... Uh, it's basically imagine you were holding up a, a person who was allowed to be here in front of you. <laughs> we have a walking key card. Yep. All right. Onward. And down. Right. You guys proceed through the tunnel for probably about another like three minutes. Um, as you guys walk past, if you pay attention to the sides, you notice that the further down you go, these little like uh, discolored discs of stone grow increasingly frequent until it, it hits a level of like absurdity where there's like a ring of them around the whole tunnel. Like whoever put these here is borderline paranoid. Okay, now they're just being wasteful. This is an obtuse overuse of material. Their wastefulness shall lead to their death. Um, Imagine after a little bit of... <laughs> I love yeah, the full right. send off, Pete. I really do. <laughs> You're making the best of COVID. <laughs> after proceeding a bit further, um, the people at the front. Well, actually, everyone, because you guys are kind of smushed into one another. You start to hear the sound of like a uh, like a welding torch connecting with metal, and you start to see faint little flashes of like electric blue light coming from around the bend. 
electric boogaloo. Around the bend, you say? <clears throat> Over the river and through the wood, if you would. Just around the river bend? Just around the river bend. Yes, Jake, let's go! <laughs> uh, I'm gonna assume we're still stealthed up. Um, it's an hour. Did yes. I lose concentration when I got shot? We didn't roll for that. Uh, you took six damage. So mm -hmm. DC 10 constitution saving throw for concentration. 19 plus, th uh, plus one. Let's go. Beautiful. It's a dirty 20. We still be stealthy. Yeah, you still be stealthy. Uh, I say we stealth around the corner and see if we can see what this welding thing of a chick is. Uh, you are all behind. I could. You're done. I, I don't want to hog, but I could uh, bug or rat and go real. That real... might be the best option here. Okay. Is that especially with. I turn into a. I turn into a, a just a little spider and just. All right. My way. On the wall. So you go. Kind of coming around the corner. Yeah. So you go around the corner and you see <clears throat> this tunnel falls off into like it just ends in a sheer expanse in front of you. Not like a drop down. I'm saying that the tunnel basically just immediately ends and okay. then it opens up into like a opens Big up into a room. Cavern, maybe. Yeah. Inside, you see a lot of those drones in different states of either construction or repair or things like that. You see on the left side of the room, there are Th three of those things that are active that are actively drilling into the wall at an angle that would imply they're going upwards towards the surface and you look around the rest of the room and you see more uh, crouton sized poles going off in different directions um, at the center of the room where this electric blue light is flashing from, you look in that direction, all eight of your spider eyes are just like, ah! Because welding's really fucking bright. Um, you see a uh, an overweight half-orc covered in dirty, uh, like, dirty heavy leathers who has two goggles on over his eyes as he's standing behind one of these things, welding at its innards. Um... And he seems pretty involved in his work. Okay. I skitter on back to the party. I poof, appear. And, uh, okay, so we've got some, uh, we've got some croutons going upwards. We've got a couple of others going into the, into the bowels of the earth in the other direction. But there's this, uh, 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 this, this half orc in the center and he's working on stuff. He's, he's in the guts of one of them, one of them, uh, croutons. Uh, he seems real focused. He's got the goggles on, which means he might not have very good periphery. Uh, we could just run up and gut him, but all I do, um, speak orcish. I don't know if that's going to be helpful, but I'm just throwing it out there on the table. Considering the only thing that's supposed to be here are other croutons, I don't know if another who speaks any language would be helpful currently. But well, it is important that there is the minor goggles, you say. And the blinding light of the... Bzz, bzz. I am familiar with the visage of the underminer. Wow. The goggles were prominently featured. Holy shit, dude, you are a <laughs> lot right now. <laughs> I think that this man is our target. Oh. We need a plan to infiltrate Tink. How big is the inside of Crouton? Well, I can fit in it, so... Um, but I'm How... pretty small. Is it possible to Trojan horse... I, I don't know. I might need to make some different. Uh, How many other people can you make small? Uh, probably only one. Okay, okay, okay. So, hmm. Let's step in and say that Crouton has a carry capacity of two small creatures. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> Clever. Well, I can, Clever. I can, you know, I can, I can, you know. Hold him there if we need to. I... Hmm. We the need thing a way to we make. We don't want 
is for him to turn all of the other croutons on to us. That's true. That's true. We would be we out of numbers. Don't fight that many. Though we the could bottle is pretty them. narrow. Yeah. We could always bottleneck them as an option. Uh -huh, I could turn him into a turtle. I mean. Turtlefication rituals. Very nice. <laughs> Throw them into an inconvenient spot and get them stuck. Turn them over. <laughs> <laughs> I think the main thing we should focus on. See how quickly we can dispatch of the Underminer. Hopefully that the override to make these things deadly is a manual and not an automatic function. Wait, would we know that? Question. Yeah. If a person Pink. is paralyzed... Oh, I interrupted. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. um, um, would we know if they were... If they automatically turn into, like, killer bots, or do they... Is it, like, a manual function? So you would, you would know that they're not... Uh, clearly, they're not an initially designed to be hostile towards flesh people. Um, Tink, you would know that it's basically like, uh, you would take, you would basically take a normal one that you learned this from tinkering in the thing's head and basically undoing this. So basically what, whoever set this thing out basically through either like through artifice or like means encoded in like a specific, like prerogative or an op or like some sort of mission so that it could basically just send it off and it would single-mindedly do that one thing. Uh, I would say consider it similar to something like the spell effect of like suggestion, mm. but like hardwired into this thing. So it would be like, it would have to already be in the robot. So in order for a robot to go killer bot, it would have to have already been tinkered with. Okay, I've got two things but I can, I can wait i'm sorry i'm interrupting no you're good uh -huh. um i've got a weird spell that well uh, i haven't used yet but from my understanding of it um originally i thought maybe it was the exact opposite of what we wanted but now i'm thinking is it a verbal uh sickum kind of a activation or is it does he have to go in there and like do something to get them all to be aggressive because I have this thing called anti-life shell and he would not be able to leave the anti-life shell to get near to his rabbits R robots you have to go bun. in and tinker with them bun pun so um, if they're not already activated to uh, attack then he would have to tinker with them so as long as he can't get to them Okay, and if I, I were to paralyze someone, go ahead. Sorry. No, I wanted to. I wanted to throw in. So you, the the change has to be made in the head, but oh. you have only seen these things after they've been sent on their way. So the party wouldn't be able to tell if like you could keep a robot functioning normal and then later after it's been modified. So like, basically, what I'm trying to say is, in order to give the robot the ability to go killer bot, you have to tinker with it. But the party at this point doesn't have the information to know whether or not a bot could continue to function as a normal drone and then get turned on after it's had those modifications. Or if it's just once the mods are made, it's always killer bot. Okay. So basically, it could go one of two ways. It could, it could go either he tinkers in the head and then it's always killer bot after that. Or in order for it to even be t killer bot, he has to tinker in it and then tell it what to do this right. dude might be out here working on his own probably not Plan. i do think it would be pretty problematic if these machines are always have the possibility of m murdering there's lots of miners that work here well they single minded they single mindedly pursue their task i think it might be worth the gamble but we have a contingency option available to us I say, we Trojan horse, Tink, turn me small. We hide inside of the robot. We sneak out just enough to get close. Ambush the Underminer, the rest of you three. 
Stay back. Sling stuff from a distance. Dane, your shadow blade can have a thrown property and thus can be thrown at a great distance to deal damage. And because we'll Correct. be within five teeth, we can do sneak attack damage additionally. So we can be far away, get there, and then our contingency plan. If those three robots on the side go rogue and start trying to kill us, we sneak down the hallway. Only one of them can fit at a time. We can simply take them out as they approach us. Unless they take... How long was the hallway? About a four-minute walk. Four-minute walk. So we just need to simply stay back 120 feet, and I can pick them off in four rounds. And as long as we continuously move back 30 feet every time, Within four rounds, we will have them slain. That's dangerous. Moving quickly back through those halls could trigger a lot of problems. That's why we keep our robot with us. Mm. What's its movement speed? 30. 30 okay, feet, okay, exactly. Yeah. yeah. I, I can be invisible. I can go up with you. Sneaking up from behind. That's true. I say this plan might work. It's a 50-50. Are we all willing to gamble on the coin flip? Well, I, I'm really, I'm ready to gamble on that, because if you say he's tinkering like you said, you think he is, Marrow? Uh, he's in the zone. He's, he's not like elbows attention. deep in them guts. So, so, um, yeah, we have cell phone on advantage. I say... We go well, and stop him from going elbows deep in that head. I should come with. I can. I can. I can crawl up and be a little bug on the back because you can my be a bug my in the head. My, yes, uh, because my holding of of people it needs to be somewhat close, sixty feet, if it needed. You know. All good. Plans. If it were a game. I'm nervous. <laughs> I don't know why I'm nervous. It's just one dude. Let's let us prepare. He just All right. you on the head. Please. I am small. Is that for you, form of spider? Yes. Uh, I will be... I'll be a moth. Okay. <clears throat> and then Jake's going invisible. Yeah, I'll cast greater invisibility. All right. Dane! You're just hanging out? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I'm not going with. I'm gonna hang. I'm gonna hang back. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, whip that shadow blade out. Okay. All right. So we got Crouton, who has a moth resting on like the top of its head, and inside the like uh, compartment where it would hold like ores and things while it was mining, we have a small tank. Well, a normal sized tank and a small porky and you're instructing you're instructing crouton to just mosey on in I mean, yeah. and then we have edited yeah. ed who's big invisible behind crouton yeah all right crouton begins to mosey and he moves forward <clears throat> and it comes oh. oh uh can Come i say forward. um i'm assuming this is like Crouton sized door opening up into big room. Yes. Uh, so I'm going to fly up uh, and kind of like around and behind uh, Boyo. Okay. So everybody moves in on the, the Crouton horse. Crouton passes the threshold and comes in. Uh, Ed flies through up and around, big invisible. Uh, the under under minor minor is deeply enthralled in his work so as you guys enter into the space you see that the whole room is like lined in like parking spots these drones that just outline the perimeter of the room you see those tunnels going off in different directions that look freshly drilled um, as the party enters the under under minor minor um looks up kind of grunts and looks up towards the party um and like flicks his goggles up or up not towards the party towards well effectively towards the party because he's looking towards crouton 
and you see a kind of puzzled look go on his face and he like flips his goggles up and he's like what are what you're did you finish the job what's going on with you why are you back um and he's gonna start trying to talk to crouton because crouton's supposed to be his robot dog crouton's and uh, gonna make a confused worry noise <laughs> Crouton go confused, but as he starts to piece together what on earth Crouton is doing back here, um, we are out of time. So we'll oh, pick up with this. The cliffhanger. Ah. Next time. <sighs> Everyone, thank you for being here. Uh, don't go anywhere just yet. We're going to be doing a raid. Uh, but uh, I saw Bardic Dice. You just came in and you're wondering how much longer we got going on. I apologize. This is the end, but... We do have fully edited episodes up on the YouTube, Jake and Pfeffers, and you can join our Discord where we all hang out and, sh and it's it's chaotic wholesomeness for sure, for sure. Um, I'll go first. Uh, Mero, he missed his really cool looking shot, kind of bummed about that, kind of nervous about going into this fight, uh, but overall he's vibing. Um, not, not much to say about him. Uh, hi, I'm Sir Pfeffers. I make D&D TikTok content. I'm usually the DM here, but the new season, uh, but we got our summer series going on where the outstanding Dat Dirty Taco is absolutely killing this summer series as well as Good Grief George over on the Avatar some, uh, Legends summer series we got going on Tuesdays. Uh, that's it for me. I, I hail Mary over to Offbeat Outlaw. Hello. I have been sick beat Offlaw. <laughs> And I am very tired, and I've got a very, very fucked voice. <laughs> I've been playing Porky, Majestic. I pass it to Luna, and I'm gonna go pee. Hi, I'm Luna Wolfscrape. I make TikTok and Instagram. I've been playing Tink, who's very proud that she got the she got Crouton working. Um, this where she's at. She's really hoping this uh, stealth plan works. Uh, Jared. Yo, I'm Jared. Uh, playing Dane. Not much to say. Whipped a lot of, whipped a few shots. Haven't been able to use my Shadow Blade, which is the, which is the best thing. Uh, who knows? Maybe this Oracle says something wrong, and I'll Shadow Blade him. Uh, Jake. I'm Crypto Jake. Uh, come on TikTok and Instagram. Ed did, 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 is, uh, following the will that he believes is biggest duckus um little little tired after that fight so he's definitely not going into this uh full strength so hopefully it doesn't get too okay, y all, y all too serious y all hope those robots don't get turned on brother uh, you're gonna be going back to death <laughs> yeah uh but we'll see what happens uh that was the last one, right? Yeah. Oh, I, I got to go. Um, what's up, everybody? I'm Taco. I'm DMing. Uh, currently with the campaign, pretty excited about where it's at. Uh, also, there is an incredibly important plot point happening off screen right now. <laughs> oh, no. Simultaneous to this. There is a... I knew I should have gone and looked. Massive plot point happening off screen. Uh... <laughs> and I am very excited for uh, the aftermath of that. <laughs> ah! <laughs> yeah no i'm really excited for you guys to deal with the underminer under underminer minor and uh kind of thwart his plans before other people could have thwarted yeah no this the, the decision i'm very excited to see how this plays out at least we have confirmation that it wasn't just some guy working on robots like he's supposed to <laughs> <laughs> yeah but all right is that oh, yeah, that? Yeah, anyhow yeah that's it that's all right it. today it's an old classic we're just gonna go hang out in critical role everybody have a fantastic rest of your evening i will see you all soon uh oh also i'm on saturday i'm gonna be over at quincy's tavern doing some pvp very excited for that um all right have a good night